got this morning and I wasn't in prison But I can't promise that I'm far from it I'd still kill a man for a cigarette But with friends like you who need homicide Yeah, Viva. Um, it depresses me that uh, Jara. No, I mean yes, but no. I mean two days a week for years now. I have streamed at this time slot, so yeah. Um. So yes, late night stream, but no, nothing out of the ordinary. Viva, um, yeah, it depresses me when I think about Pat not writing songs anymore. He was a very good songwriter. Um, I mean, it's in shared content, Rev. Like, Cassidy posted it. Just scroll up somewhere or use the search function. Yeah. Uh, Cupcake. I'm sorry. Cupcake posted it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, Cupcake posted it. Just scroll up to yesterday. Yesterday at 1, um, well, 1 p.m. my time at least. Um, tell you what. I'll do your job for you, Rev. There you go. Link in chat. Oh. All right, now back to my position in the list. Um, all right, so, oh, geez, forgive me. I'm still in the refractory period. I just finished an hour of fucking working out. Um, so I'm a little scattered, shall we say. Oh, it's just a list of bullshit. I mean, what's up, Burger? I, I'm 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 just low energy right now because I'm in a dip. Uh, I'm in a dip. Um, I just finished an hour, over an hour of workout, so you know, fucking core, legs, arms, weights, you know, shit like that. Um, so body's still coming back online. It's the the glycogen deficit that occurs, but it will. Come back here in a second. Um, you should feel you you should feel that way, Jara. <laughs> I've never played Fortnite. I just enjoy shitting on Fortnite. Um, it's just one of those things I enjoy doing. But um, yeah, I've never actually played it, not once. So, yeah. Uh. Uh, let's see. All right. So many headlines. I have, um, okay, Burger, here's the deal. I hate isometric games. Yes, I'm playing an isometric game right now. Pro Project Zomboid is a game I desperately want to love. And I will tell you right now, I hate isometric games. Um, it's, dude, it's, it's a love-hate relationship. Disco Elysium is a very, very well-made game. It is a, an excellent story. It is worth playing. 
It's just not my style of game. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really don't enjoy it. Um, but I recommend everybody try it because it might be your thing. And it's an excellent, excellent example of writing and world building and storytelling. It, it, it's, it's worth looking into. I, I recommend everybody try Disco Elysium. Um, <laughs> sure, Amaris. Um, but it's not my style. You practiced a bit before your friend kidnapped you? Yeah, Kat and I figured out the combat last night. It doesn't make it any better. The game's combat is still shit. Um, Project Zomboy's combat is utter dog shit. But Kat and I have at least figured it out. It's That's an achievement on our part, not on the game's part. It's not like something clicked and we're like, oh, it's actually good. We just didn't understand it. No, we, we know how to work with it now. It's still dog shit. But we understand how to get what we need out of it most of the time. So, it's that isometric view in combination with uh, some of the mechanics of the game. It's just it's dog shit. It's just the way it is. <clears throat> eh, Karina, good on him. Um, so, what do we want to talk about? I mean, there's just so many fucking headlines, and it's just Doomer across the board. Um, Ottawa's police are facing... Uh, you know what? I'm going to speed run some of these. Look, if anybody wants to stop me and you want to actually discuss one of these, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to speed run a bunch of headlines. Um, and I will, I will come back. I will, I, I, if I'm past it and you're like, no, 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 the previous one. And you just, you know, we will, we will go back to it. We will go back to it. No, I'm going to go into theory next. Um. Uh, all right, so we talked about Dolly yesterday. That's where my line is. Um, okay, so Ubisoft celebrated its employees' hard work by giving them NFTs, which is even uh, more valueless than the healthcare companies that give rocks uh, to their fucking employees. Congratulations, Ubisoft. You actually fucking like managed to top United Healthcare. Uh, Minnesota State Patrol banned from attacking journalists in a court settlement. I mean, they needed a court to tell the cops in Minnesota to not shoot journalists. Just saying, wonderful. Um, public sector employees in Puerto Rico are, are actually on a multi-day strike. Nobody's heard about it because it's not being talked about in the mainstream media. But in fact, there are photos if you go, if you avail yourself of the internet, of a large amount of people. Um, stood in front of public uh, public buildings, government houses, uh, uh, like uh, uh, courthouses, those sorts of things. Um, public sector workers in Puerto Rico are on a general strike. Um, so, like you know, show some solidarity for the the Puerto Rican um, uh, workers. Um, Ottawa. Um, Ottawa, the, uh, Ottawa has been facing a, what they described as a flood of fake 911 calls. The trucker convoy has taken to flooding the emergency, uh, call system, the 911 phone system with fake calls continuously all day, every day, all day, every day, ensuring that if somebody's grandmother ha starts having a, a heart attack or something, you can't get through. Congratulations. They're probably killing people that way too. Good job guys. China um, has bought none of the $200 billion promised under the U.S. Phase 1 trade deal that Trump lauded as the result of his trade war with China for a variety of reasons, none of which we're actually going to get into. But just know that the, tr the deal that Trump administration struck with China to reallocate and level the playing field of our trading uh, uh, agreement, none of that $200 billion has been held up on the Chinese end. Good job, Trump. Another win. Okay, so everybody's had to have seen this one in the um, in the uh, news cycle for sure. The records that were found at Mar-a-Lago. Trump basically was destroying records the entire time, <laughs> flushing them down the toilet, literally eating them himself. Um, also stole like top secret documents and took like literal reams back to um, uh, um, Mar-a-Lago with him from the White House. Uh, including like classified top secret documents that are in no way, shape or form his, his property. 
Um, so, you know, that, that, he, he literally was apparently like, if you can remember, if you can remember back, Trump, one of the early fucking things Trump used to do was complain about the toilets in the White House, about the, how they wouldn't flush. Because apparently what he was trying to do was flush like 10, 15 documents down the toilet at a time. And he was clogging the toilets with like classified documents. Figures. Um, fucking, let's see. Uh, this, uh, a Spanish court has ordered the demolition of an entire golf resort built in a protected area. It was a protected area. The, sp the golf course built it anyway, so go fuck themselves. Spanish court has ordered the demolition of the entire golf course. Raise it. Based, uh, based Spain. Um, this one, I'm probably going to have to show you on the screen, but either way, we will do that that way. Um, Russia. Russia at it again. Um, fucking here's, ignore the right, ignore the right, ignore the right. Grigory Putilov, 14 years old, 1938, played with a wheel of a broken cart, accidentally drowned it, uh, like dumped it in the river. They said drowned. Sentenced to five years in prison for, quote, damaging the collective farm system. Uh, Yurovov, uh, Nikita, 16 years old, 2022, played Minecraft, built and blew up the FSB building in the video game Minecraft, sentenced to five years, uh, in hard labor. He's doing hard labor, by the way, um, at a fucking labor camp, sentenced to five years in prison for terrorism. Russia, never fucking change. Jesus goddamn Christ, Russia. Oh, by the way, uh, Yurov, uh, Yur Yurov is uh, not the only one. There's two other uh, young men that were sentenced with him, same ages. Um, Russia is sending 15 and 16 year olds to like labor camps for literally doing shit in Minecraft. 100%. Russia just absolutely never changed. It's almost like it's an authoritarian shithole and always has been. Um, let's see. 70 no-knock search warrants issued since, since last September in Minneapolis alone. What are we talking about? We're talking about the Amir Locke thing, the, the, the black gentleman who just got shot in his own home for a no-knock warrant on the wrong address because he had a perfectly legal firearm and he was basically facing a home invasion and he reacted so the cops put him down like a fucking rabid dog. Um, so what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the 70 no-knock search warrants that were issued since last September when Minneapolis Mayor Frey banned them. Oh, of those 70, just FYI, three quarters were against black, uh, uh, black citizens. Just so you know, um, I'm sure there's nothing to that disparity in the, in the statistics. Um, oh, gerrymandering, 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 um, fucking you're an idiot. You're, you're just a fucking idiot. Anyway, gerrymandering. Uh, the GOP is getting bit in the ass by their own gerrymandering in states that they don't actually control. In New York, Republicans are literally whining right now about Democratic gerrymandering of the congressional map because it's going to flip three seats. Um, based on the aggressive gerrymandering and the Supreme Court kickback decision that uh, was recently done, basically it looks, it essentially it looks like the gerrymandering is on the table. It's perfectly legal at this point. Um, hey, Mitre, we're doing a speed. Uh, what's up, Mitre people? Uh, what's up, charcuteries? There we go. Um, I'm doing a speed run of headlines because fuck it, there's too many and I fucking, they're all miserable. So like, if you want to talk about something, talk about something, we can loop back to it. No problem. Uh, Kinzinger, fucking one of our Congress people literally said, we have to recognize the possibility of a civil war in the United States of America. Um, so civil war too. Great. We're talking about it at a congressional level now. That's not disturbing. Oh, let's see. Consumer price index, by the way, has hit a 40 year high. Oh, what goes alongside that? Um, four headlines, just four headlines for your consumption here. Do note price, uh, the consumer price index is at a 40 year high McDonald's now with higher prices, top 23 billion in, uh, in revenue in 2021 new, uh, new record revenue for them. Profit soared 59% from the year earlier. Exxon Mobil reported an $8.9 billion fourth quarter profit as oil prices soar. Oil and gas giant said it would resume a st stock back buyback pro uh, program by repurchasing 10 billion billion dollars in stock. UPS just posted record price uh, breaking profits, plans to hike prices in 2022, and Starbucks raises prices despite soaring profits. Again, consumer index uh, price index hits a 40 year high. I can't imagine why. Hmm, I might have something to do with corporate greed, run amok, but I mean, who the fuck am I? I'm just some guy talking to you right here. Okay, so uh, the Supreme Court, remember the fucking gerrymandering we just referenced? Here's the case that we're referencing in the previous gerrymandering headlines. 
Supreme Court has uh, greenlit Alabama's racial gerrymandering. Um, it is literally cutting the uh, black representation uh, in half. In half. The redistricting will uh, take away, uh, essentially, it will drop from 38 to 17 percent representation in the uh, in their uh, in their state uh, uh, amongst their state representatives. Um, so you know, nothing racist at all going on in Alabama. It's not like you know <clears throat> something that I'm sure we should look into. Um, oh, fucking let's see. Um, uh, let's see. That was what was her name? Diamonds. Uh, Diamonds Ford. Uh, Diamonds Ford uh, is sitting in a jail cell right now, but calls have begun to uh, mount uh, to drop the charges against her because she, a black woman, of course, in Florida, of course, um, shot an officer during a raid on her home. Was the raid justified? No. Was the were they looking for her? No. What? Uh, she never heard SWAT ident- officers identify themselves as law enforcement, and she thought she was firing at an intruder. Once she knew they were cops, she stopped. Fi- she stopped firing. So, yeah. Um, she's sitting in jail, but they're trying to get her out. I don't think it'll happen. It's Florida and she's a black woman. Uh, the, um, here's a little, uh, upbeat for you while we're doing this speed run. Um, the, uh, a judge has restored the protections of gray wolves across the U S again for like the 90th time, because we constantly go back and forth because as soon as a Republican fucking gets in, they fucking, uh, remove the protections on gray wolves and the hunter uh, and the fucking farmers start hunting them to the brink of extinction so they can protect their livestock. But the fact of the matter is, is that in most of the wilderness spaces, gray wolves keep the population in check for a blah, 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 ecology 101. All right. Judge has restored the protections of gray wolves in the U.S. The 11th, uh, 11th Circuit Court. Uh, uh, oh, they're never to be found, Viva. They're never to be found. Um, the uh, the NRA is literally silent on the Amir Locke case. Just fucking chirp, 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 crickets in the background. The NRA, the Second Amendment Foundation, those old racist white dudes never come out when it's a black person who uh, you exercised their Second Amendment rights and got into trouble for it or got deaded for it. Um, they never say a fucking peep. Um, that's how you know the NRA and the Second Amendment Foundation are just racist organizations. Um, so there you go. There are more liberal leaning gun uh, groups in the U.S. that scream their bloody heads off um, at the state level, at the national level. It's not just gun owners. It's just those two that are the two primaries in this country, NRA and Second Amendment Foundation. 11th Circuit Court uh, has granted qualified immunity to a law enforcement officer who shot and killed an innocent man on his own property because reasons he couldn't. Uh, the way qualified immunity works in this country is basically if you cannot prove using a previous uh, court decision that the civil rights of an individual were violated, um, and then you cannot even uh, begin to have the discussion about removal of qualified immunity. And apparently shooting an innocent person on their own property is not a violation of the civil our civil rights that has ever been discussed in court and a dis- guilty decision has been found, apparently, or something along those lines. I guess it's absolutely insane that I have to have this conversation. Um, I mean, Viva, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, do you have more details on that, though? Um, Ukraine is receiving Stinger anti-aircraft missiles via Lithuania, FYI, probably U.S. manufactured, knowing that uh, that part of the world. But either way, uh, either way, neither here nor there. Joe Manchin, um, the piece of shit that he is, he supports uh, increasing the amount of income that could be taxed for Social Security from one hundred forty-seven thousand dollars to four hundred thousand dollars. Of course, capital gains uh, earnings he doesn't want to touch. I can't imagine why. It can't. It can't be something like millionaires and billionaires make the majority of their money using capital gains methodology, uh, and that's where their most taxable income lies. And all you're effectively doing is taking down middle Americans uh, and their Social Security. But I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. Joe, piece of shit, West Virginia coal baron mansion. Oklahoma. Hey, what's up, Sergey? Um, what's a uh, uh, Oklahoma? I'm fucking, we're doing a speed run. Oklahoma is uh, kicking around the idea of considering uh, of building a database for pregnant people um, because they want to be able to te- keep track of pregnant people, and if they have a miscarriage or uh, you know an abortion somewhere, they want to be able to fucking murder them. I mean, uh, um, b- drag them through a legal process that's completely justified um, uh, bound, uh, uh, upon an ethical framework that is a hundred percent self consistent. I'm sure. Um, either way, Oklahoma wants to have a database of pregnant people so they can keep track of them. Uh, let's see. Um, Amsterdam 
Amsterdam is actually uh, city uh, city council is wanting to uh, pass legislation, um, pass uh, code ordinances um, to basically a, uh, a crackdown on landlords who leave properties empty intentionally um, when they can't find tenants willing to pay their absorbent prices. Um, so Amsterdam is going to start like t uh, fining and levying fines on um, uh, on owners of private property that let the property sit empty even though you know there's people that could be in that property neither here nor there um there is a bill in the u.s senate that will probably die i think it's a bill in the senate it could be uh it could be congress who the fuck knows there's a bill moving its way through con uh sorry through through the house uh there's a bill ma making its way through congress right now that would revamp the u.s postal service um oh yeah it's the senate um essentially key parts um, Medicare enrollment for the employees of the USPS. Hey, Caboose, are you here? You want to hear this one, actually. Uh, postal employees would be uh, could would be required to enroll in Medicare, so that would like totally cut down on premiums on that side. Also, it would remove the pre-fund benefits requirement that was put in by just everybody, just everybody. There wasn't even it was a voice v uh, it was a voice vote. Um, uh, and it passed Biden fucking was one of the signatories on it. It fucking like everybody's guilty for that fucking prefund bullshit. That basically is the result uh, is the, the reason that the USPS has as much funding trouble as they do is because we require them to fund their fucking health benefits 10 years in advance. All right. Well, caboose, there you go. Either way, yeah, get that job and then you can get some Medicare. Um, Fucking the CIA is doing another bulk data collections um, program. It's fucking it's look, we're not even going to get into it. Just if you want to know more about it, just know the CIA, just search for CIA is collecting in bulk certain data affecting Americans. You'll find the fucking headline. But the CIA is at it again. I, I'm sure they're cooperating with the NSA on that one. But they're again doing data collection. Hi, CIA. Um, a uh, decorated Sioux Falls police officer. Um, so you know what that means. You basically, you know what's about to happen. Decorated police officer. Yes, he has been charged with soliciting child pornography. Yep, yep. This is what happens when we talk about cops that are uh, awarded like police officer of the year sort of awards or highly decorated police officers. They always end up banging little kids or wanting to bang little kids or rubbing their pud to banging little kids. It seems to be a fucking policy amongst the cops. Um, that to be really highly decorated, you got to want to diddle little kids. I don't know. Just a pattern. What, who am I? Um, and so, uh, while we're on the co cops are all pieces of shit, police killed a record breaking number of people in 2021. Just so you know, those BLM protests didn't reduce those numbers. In fact, they went up to a record number. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where we are with the cops killing people. We know of at least 1,055 killed nationwide last year by uh, by the police alone, and that's just the ones that the Washington Post can track um, because the police are not required to report them themselves. This is just open source data gathering at this point. That um, so we know of at least 1,055 that uh, uh, that the cops killed last year, but we don't actually know the real number. It could be twice as much as that. We don't know. Um, because again, they're not required to fucking put it. Um, and, uh, let's see. And to top it off, let's see. Um, the fuck? There we go. And to top off just this absolute nightmare while we're talking about cops killing people in disproportionate numbers and arresting people in disproportionate numbers. Um, here is, here's a fun little recreation because I mean, you know, this is what uh, many of us have seen the drawings, but this is what it looked like inside a, sla uh, a transatlantic slave ship. So while we're talking about the dis uh, disparity of policing and jailing and ex uh, extrajudicial assassinations of black people in our country, let's uh, revisit how many of them arrived here. This is what it would have actually looked like inside a slave ship. We've all seen those abolitionist 2D fucking like hand-drawn maps in school. Well, this is what it actually looked like. Many weeks at sea, sometimes as much as eight weeks packed in like this. Yes, they were allowed up. They weren't like this all the time. They were put on, uh, but the only times they were allowed up was to, one, feed themselves twice a day, and two, while they were feeding themselves twice a day, they were uh, required to come up 
onto the deck and they would force them to dance or work about the ship because they had to be ready to go right to labor, hard labor, as soon as they arrived in, uh, in the new world. So they kept them in, you know, fitting shape to a certain degree, or at least the ones that survived, mind you, because many oftentimes they would be covered in feces and urine from not being allowed to go to the bathroom, having no proper facilities. They were just forced to shit and piss on themselves and each other. And many of them died of a variety of things on the way. So there you go. Stop the clock. What, what time is it? Woo. How was that for some headlines? Yes. That was, let's see, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-five. 25 that's that wasn't bad oh uh, thank you thank you uh yes i do i compile a list myself i the community assists um there is there's contributions that occur in the community um but yes the, the list is of my own div uh dividing divining that was amazing and gross yes it was um there were a couple i excluded um, because I want to, um, was that the gays only, uh, the, the pub, um, the gerrymandering I can give you, wait, do you want, okay. So here's, uh, uh, Karina in chat. Um, that's the origin. That's Alabama's racist ass fucking gerrymandering. And then this is New York's gerrymandering the other direction. So there you go. Read up. Yep. Not doing, not doing breakdowns on them today. Um, okay. So who's here? Who's problematic and who's an idiot? Humanity has not prospered under Judeo Christianity. You're an idiot. Um, logical aspects of the Bible is they built this great civilization. They did not build this great civilization. Um, so again, you're an idiot. Um, and no, apparently I've been uh, informed that like that's not an ad hom attack. That's just me mocking you. Um, two different rhetoricians informed me on that one. Um, yeah, we aren't a Christian nation. The West, uh, we, America was not created by the Bible. Sorry. Founders themselves state this explicitly. Everything about us is like basically antithetical to the Judeo-Christian mythology. Or it was prior to 1980. Um, the the uh, the Reagan administration is largely responsible for that. We've gone that into, it gone into that in great detail and depth before. Um, so you know, yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't really fucking, I mean, uh, fucking a there. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, I was fucking, I was, uh, I mean, it's an appropriate response on binary. Let's see. So who does murder comms follow? Lauren Southern, wake up America. Oh, fucking Ann Cap. Fucking, oh yeah, yeah, no, fucking definitely somebody who understands basic logic and history. Um, anyway, all right. So y'all want like something actually happy. I can give you something actually happy. Um, and this is an example of the internet being good. All right. Let's do this. 
Now, for those of you who can't see, let me just, I'll, um, I'll read it to you. Spotted this specimen trying to dance the other week. He stopped when he saw us laughing. Don't worry. This story starts mean, but it ends up truly beautiful. So, somebody posted to this fucking thing. Fu uh, uh, you can tell by the colors, probably 4chan, frankly. Uh, spotted this specimen trying to dance the other week. He stopped when he saw us laughing. Like, dude, this fucking dude. Yeah, he's grossly overweight. He's grossly overweight. There's no way around that. But this dude, I mean, he's sad as fuck when they were, like, laughing at him, right? All right. Cassandra. Fucking big dick energy. Fucking just fucking feminine energy to the rescue on this one, right? Anyone know this man or who posted this? There's a huge group of ladies in LA who would like to do something special. Here is the dancing man. We don't know much about you, but a photo on the internet suggests that you wanted to dance and we're made to feel like you shouldn't. We want to see you dance freely. And if you would have us, we would love to dance with you. We're prepared to throw quite the dance party just for you if you'd have us. To be clear, it's 1,727 of us and we're all women. If this isn't appealing, we're okay in taking uh, with taking no for an answer, but we'd like you to know the offer stands. May we have this dance. Sincerely, an occasionally overly enthusiastic group of young women in California. Pharrell Williams. Hey, Cassandra, keep me posted on your dance party. Dancing man found. Never be ashamed of yourself. You're both truly hashtag other. Moby. I offer my DJ services for free. No one should ever be ashamed of dancing. There he is, and there's Cassandra. We're gonna dance. There's Andrew C. Uh, Andrew WK or Andrew. It's Andrew Andrew WK, I think. Um, fucking at the at the full on red carpet party. Yeah, and there he is dancing his fucking ass off. They threw an epic party, apparently. So there you go. The internet used for good. Um, and because I'm an evil, evil bastard. <laughs> because I'm the reason you're not allowed to have anything nice in this world. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, those moments are a palate cleanser. Those moments uh, are few and far between. Um, Purdue University Police Chief John Cox said in a statement Wednesday that the officer arrested this man following a call from a third party who said it appeared a woman was being held against her will. Take a good look at the officer. Notice a familiarity. Notice maybe, maybe some grooming habits. He's even got the hair, by the way. He's got the fucking hair, too. All right, here we go. Stop <laughs> that! Stop it! That's my girlfriend! Stop! Get Stop off of it. him! Get off of Stop him! It, You're on video! You are please. on video! Did you notice what's important yet? The black man had a white girlfriend, and somebody called the cops on him. And Officer Farva slash Hitler responded and immediately took the black man to the ground. <laughs> you're hurting him! Stop you are hurting him! You are hurting me! You get off Stop of it! You're on video! Please. People here now, please. please! You are on video! I'm done! I can't do anything! Please! please. Please! 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 You're hurting him! You're hurting him! Stop Can it. you take your elbow off his fucking neck? You've been disrespectful this whole take time! Take your elbow off his neck! Please! Get off me again, man! I told you not to let the... Huh? Touch me again and I will... All right, look, I'm advocating for nothing in this moment. 
understand my legal position. All right? Understand my position. But what should have been done is probably a very close range pepper spray to his eyes. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is I'd probably end up getting the boyfriend too in, in the shot. But when he has him like this and then looks up at her, what she probably should do is reach out and give him a face full of pepper spray. He is in a position. Checker, you might. You might. You really, really might. But. This guy is attacking a black man for having a white girlfriend in 2022. And being, let's face it, an uppity Negro. Let's be real with ourselves. You know how this went down. Just based on the discussion that's occurring, you were disrespectful the entire time. This dude rolled up on a black man with his white girlfriend and started being mouthy out of the gate and expected this, uh, this gentleman to be submissive. And he probably wasn't. And so the cop became disrespectful because in his eyes, the uppity Negro who shouldn't have a white woman anyway needs taught a lesson. It's 2022. It's time society takes a different opinion on these matters. If you see this in public and there aren't 15 cops there, it's a snowbank where a fat white Farva slash Hitler looking motherfucker is holding a black man down with his elbow to his throat while clearly bystanders are fearing for the black man's life, maybe it's time that the opinion of society is that self-defense applies to the cops too. And so I'm opening the door to discussion of whether it would or not be appropriate to walk up and pepper spray this man in the face because it would be non-lethal, right? He doesn't have an allergy to pepper spray and he goes anaphylactic, but it would be non-lethal and it would calm the situation. I think there's a case to be made that self-defense needs to be revisited with regards to how the police interact with the public. And this is in light of Las Vegas recently swatting and executing a man, wrong, wrong address, no knock warrant, just busts into some random dude's house and puts him down like a fucking dog because he dared defend himself. Because, well, he was asleep on his couch and he grabbed the nearest gun on his fucking table and was like, what the fuck is going on? Right? And then Amir Locke, a couple weeks later, in Minneapolis, fucking gets put down like a dog because he dared try and defend himself in his own residence, which was the wrong address for a no-knock warrant. This happens regularly now. We have cops, and that's the extreme end. That's the extreme end of the spectrum. There's all of the stuff that will never make the papers. There's all of the stuff that will never make the headlines, that will never make the discussions, all of the slights, all of the resisting arrests, all of the sundown pullovers, all of the tr bullshit traffic stops, all of the harass harassment campaigns based on 
based on, based on. It's time we revisit this topic. Could, uh, could, wither. Um, if we if cops start wearing gas masks everywhere they went, they'd be far less observant. You can just walk up behind them. You can't, you, dude. Gas masks are such a hindrance to uh, uh, to uh, um, to your operational awareness, dude. Your awareness goes right out the window. So let them. You could you could literally walk up in their periphery and they won't be able to see you. You could be right here and they won't see you. So. Yeah, I think the discuss public. I think the discussion has come time. Now, you're choking me. You're choking me. Yo, yo, yo! I swear to God, get your elbow off his neck. Get your elbow off. Help, he's on his neck! Please help! This officer won't get off his neck! He's taking it too far! He's on his- That's where the video ends. I got nothing for you past that. But... Oh, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the raid. Um, we were just discussing the... We were discussing the discussion surrounding potentially beginning a conversation. Notice the couching language. I'm attempting to protect myself and all of you. Beginning the discussion, uh, the conversation about self-defense against the cops. We had just watched a video of Purdue University officer who literally looks like Farva slash Hitler. Got the little Hitler mustache and a little sweep and everything. And then got Farva's body and general appearance. So he's sort of a, a Hitler Farva or an Adolf Farva, however you wish to go. Um, who attacked a black gentleman because a call came in from a third party stating that it appeared a woman was being held against her will. That woman was not being held against her will. She was the white girlfriend of a black gentleman. And so somebody called the cops because, let's face it, they felt that blacks and whites don't belong together. And then Adolf Pigler came up and, by all accounts, was disrespectful because, let's face it, Chances are that gentleman did not immediately act as his submissive. And so he felt that the uppity Negro needed taught a lesson. And so he was going to be the one to give it to him. So he threw him to the ground in a snowdrift and began to apply his elbow to the gentleman's throat. It was at that point that I suggested that it might be valuable discussion if in society we begin maybe contemplating things like walking up and pepper spraying that cop in the face. Because clearly he is the aggressor. Clearly he is the threat in this situation. Clearly he is the violent element that needs Tempering. I'm merely opening the door to the conversation. I'm not suggesting anybody run out and start pepper spraying cops. I'm just suggesting that maybe, maybe the truly criminal elements in society need treated as truly criminal elements. Aw, Crispy can't figure out it's Overton window. That's hilarious. Did you know that there's something beyond conservative and liberal? Did you know that there's other political ideologies and philosophical systems and ethical frameworks beyond liberal conservative? Oh, 
Well, I'll take the biddies. Thank you kindly. Oh, in public. Didn't set off the 12-month alert before. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, thank you for... Dude, fucking year public. Oh, shit. Public... For those of you who don't know, Public Loser is my favorite place to hang out. Like, I don't I don't hang out on other streams. I don't. I got other shit to do, and frankly, I don't enjoy those spaces. But public space, I enjoy. Public lets me complain about my physical stuff, too, from time to time. Um, anyway, thanks, public. Much appreciated. Much love, my man. Oh, this guy's suggesting something uh, that is separate from the high mind. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love it when they break. I love it when they break. <laughs> That's always my favorite moment. Like, this isn't liberal. This isn't right. This is. Why don't you vote? Why do you hate liberals? You know what? Beyond crispy. Would you like to come on the air and have a discussion with me? Would you like to have a conversation? Because I don't think you've ever spoken to somebody like me before, based on your responses thus far. Um, and it might be educational for both of us. The offer stands. No pressure. But if you'd like to, by all means. Um, I vote every time, not for everything, though. Sometimes it's just a fucking both. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to give me biddies, my man. You don't have to give me biddies. I thank you nonetheless, but thank you. Exclamation discord in chat will get you the discord link. And then just join voice chat and I will move you on to the on air section. Um. <laughs> Jimmy, disco. <laughs> There's no disco command. <laughs> fucking the the ball comes down, starts spinning. Oh Jesus Christ, I'm still fucking. Alright. Um <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'll get right on that. Fucking put installing a disco ball in here and He's setting up the fucking code for doing that on command. What would I have to do? Be a Raspberry Pi, probably. I don't think I'd go with Arduino with that, though. Now, Raspberry Pi would be easier to do. I just set off the actuators. It'd be one, it'd be an actuator, and oh, it wouldn't even be an actuator. It'd just be two power cycles. And yeah, close that circuit, close that circuit, web hook. We are on board. Yeah, okay. So I just built that in my head, basically. Yeah. <laughs> After you build a home security system with, like, automation and, like, from the ground up, hardware, software, like, web interface, like, after you do, like, that scale, it's really nothing. Um... I wouldn't even, dude, Viva, I wouldn't even put a stepper in. I'd fucking, I, I'd literally just use a, uh, uh, like, I'd probably, oh, God, two things in one. Anyway, can I have your thoughts on the article? What article? What am I looking for? Which article? Where am I scrolling to, Viva? I don't see. God damn. Uh, make murder legal act by Missouri law enforcement dies in legislation. <laughs> Missouri bill that would expand the right to shoot and kill someone into self-defense. Senate bill 666. Oh God, this had to be a troll, right? Change state law to presume self-defense in cases where physical. So automatically, if you kill somebody, self-defense is, is assumed and then it has to be proved otherwise. All right. I mean, I kind of, I kind of like it. I'd have to read the actual uh, the actual language of the draft, but you know what? It's not as terrible as it sounds. Like the name is fucking terrible, but the concept is halfway decent to assume innocence prior, right? Uh, voice chat, voice chat. Go to voice chat on the Discord server. 
So whomever killed the bill presumably acted in self-defense too. Yeah, oh, I'm sure I could, public. I'm just not going to go looking for it. <laughs> I'm just not going to go look. That's all. But yeah, for sure. Uh, no, it's it's actually not that not that channel, but it is under voice channel. You just go to voice chat. I'm guessing. The the great filter works once again. The great filter works once again. Oh Lord. That just doesn't bode well. This doesn't bode well for anybody who knows. <laughs> anybody who knows, it's it's one of those dude, the filter works. Crispy. Read the first two sentences of the the rules and guidelines. There you go. He's he's passed the welcome page. He's passed the welcome page. Or they. I don't know their gender or Yeah. Now you should see Viva. <laughs> now you should see voice chat on the left. Join the voice chat voice channel. I will move you to the on air one. <sighs> oh, okay, we got it. All right. Love the hive mind. All right. What do we got? Okay, so provisions of subsection two. All right. Uh, actor was the initial aggressor. Okay. Under the circumstances, as the actor reasonably believes them to be, the person whom he or she seeks to protect would not be justified in using such protective force. Uh, commit, committing, or escaping after the commission of a forcible fel felony. All right, that's fair. A uh, person shall not use deadly force upon another person if the circumstances specified in subsection one of uh, this section, unless... Reasonably believes there's deadly forces necessary to protect themselves. Blah, blah, blah. Child unborn himself. Oh, God. That, that right there. That right there is the issue. That's, that's a huge issue. This, this bill would make it legal to kill somebody who's considering getting an abortion. Yeah. The, the wording is, it's open already. That's problem number one. We don't even have to get into it past there. Uh, can you count to five for me, please, so I can do your audio check? One, two, three, four, five, fucking chisel. Cool. Please and thank you. And I'm just checking. You are over the age of 18. Are you not? <laughs> I'm 23. Didn't need to know the real number. I just needed you to affirm that that question. But thank that you. That was a thank fake anyway. number. I gave you a fake number. Fair enough. As long as it's over 18. It's um, over 18. All right, so you're clearly clearly an American, um, somewhere in the uh, Hawaiian. Okay, uh, I mean, so you know, tech legally American, so sociologically yes, maybe legally maybe not. American. Yeah, um, ethnically, sociologically, spiritually, traditionally, maybe, uh, spiritually, maybe not so much. I'm a cunt. Fair enough. Um, all right, let me kill the music because I always take that down for conversations. Uh, 23 is still under 25. That is correct, Amaris. So by, the, by the standard set forth by myself in this channel, you are still a minor at that age. Um, Wait, what? Basically, the long and short of it is I got sick and tired of the age of consent discussion being based on arbitrary numbers. And so uh, we... Yeah, I, I don't think we base age our, is really... Well, 
science has something to say on this matter and frontal cortex development in the human brain doesn't begin to stop or finish until around the age of 25 to 28. Therefore, the uh, a, por a portion of the brain that is responsible for long-term planning and uh, higher executive functions essentially okay. isn't actually developed until at least 25. So yeah, therefore I did enough crack cocaine under the age of advance the speed. Under the of age of 25, you are still technically a minor. My number is based on science rather than an arbitrary sociological decision. That's how Wait, the age of so consent. You're, you're telling me you can't. You, you called me on the air just to to punish me. No, no, it's just about a, being underage. It's just a side discussion. Apparently, you are under 25, oh. though. Okay, so um, how would you describe yourself politically? I describe myself as fuck the government. Okay. Fuck the bourgeoisie. What, uh, who are the bourgeoisie? Who's the bourgeoisie? Mm -hmm. How do you identify this what do you group mean? for yourself? How do you identify this group for yourself? I can identify the government pretty easily. Um, how do you, who do you define as the bourgeoisie? Uh, pretty much like the full English party. Everybody from uh, Prince Andrew to Queen Elizabeth. Would they not be the monarchists rather than the bourgeoisie? That is the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie traditionally is defined as middle and upper class. So while they would be contained within the group, they wouldn't be exclusively the group. In fact... The, uh, Are you telling me you think the bourgeoisie is a hidden element? No, it's a fairly well-defined uh, sociological class, traditionally speaking, and generally includes uh, anybody who isn't the lowest rung on the sociological, uh, socioeconomic so spectrum. So you would say Joe Biden is part of the bourgeoisie? He would, be, uh, he would traditionally be upper class rather than upper middle class, so he actually would probably be, uh, not be the bourgeoisie. He would generally be, con uh, be considered one of the class. elites. That dude's a fucking piece of shit. Upper middle class. And he is upper class. He is, by definition, upper class. He's a piece of shit. Well, he's not upper class. He's dog shit. How do you define economically upper class, then? Uh, people who have respectful hearts. People who don't need money to survive like that. Would being a multimillionaire qualify? No, that's not upper class. You do understand your definitions don't align with traditionally anyone i don't know traditional methods okay so where did you come across this information and how did you glean it what what process by which did you learn this information i thought about it well and then i grew up and then i owned to it the internet textbooks i think college? if you can make mac and cheese out of garbanzo beans, you are ethically awesome. Jenkins, I don't know if he means classy. I don't know if he... Are you? Do you understand the distinction between sociologically class and economically class? I think economics are fucking stupid. You may think they are fucking stupid, and to some degree I do agree, in fact, with that... A generalized statement, but they also govern a good portion of our world, so it's best yeah. that you understand them. Somewhat. Are you, yeah, uh, Cupcake, I'll ask, are you sober? Is that even a question? That's a no. Okay. Alcohol or some other thing? Just so I know what I'm working Lots with. Lots of things. Okay. Um, so you seemed thrown by, uh, our discussion surrounding, uh, law enforcement because you couldn't quite pin down what was going on because I didn't read as liberal and I didn't read as right winger. Yeah. So I, I was just wondering why you thought the police officer was in the wrong. Um, because he aggressed against an individual who wasn't committing a crime. How do you know that individual isn't committing a crime? Because we have multiple witness statements and video camera evidence of it. Um, but it turns out George Floyd was a criminal the entire time. So, Was he a violent criminal? 
Yeah, he's raped. He has rape records. Was at that moment, was he being violent? Oh my god. Uh, so you're you're saying a rape individual should just be like go and that that doesn't even fucking was matter. Was he committing a rape in that moment? No, he wasn't raping the officer. Did he have? Did he? Did he have? Did he have? He can't rape an officer. Did he have an? Did he have an active warrant for any sexual assaults? No, he was high though on fentanyl. Is that a? Is that a crime worthy of execution? No, but I don't think. How are you justifying? How are you justifying putting his knee on his neck? That's not possible. Are you a? Are you, you can't physically. Are you like, a qualified? Do you know how much pressure you would have to put on somebody? What is your? Are deg- you a fucking doctor? What is, what is your degree in? Biomedical science, pathology, um, morti- uh, mortician sciences, general practice. I what didn't is finish you finish college? Oh, okay. So you are speaking I didn't from finish com- high school. Okay, so you are a non-high school graduate who, who is positing that you have superior knowledge of human physiology and biomechanics. Correct. I think what you're spouting is bullshit, and you're just contributing to the bullshit that the media keeps supplying. What if evidence do you have to contradict anything I have said? What evidence do you have? Okay, well, let's let's go looking. All right, Ben Shapiro, let's go. PSI required to block breathing. Let's see. Uh, you're doing your side too, right? You're 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 researching right now. I'm. I all the research I need is in my head. Of which you've gone through an explicitly scientific process starting with hypothesis and observational data sets, correct? Dude, that doesn't have to be done. Yeah, no, it does. To have the right answer. Uh, sure. Sure. Okay, so what, uh, what, how many pounds per square inch does it take to block the uh, human breathing apparatus? And what is the PSI that uh, a knee can uh, can apply on the weight of the officer who was applying that force? Well, if you think about it, that was a six foot one officer mm-hmm. who was roughly, for an average male, he would have been like 180. 180. What's the weight? What's the weight of the gear that a police officer weighs on average? Fifty pounds. Okay, so 230 pounds. What's what's the uh, size of an average human uh, meniscus? It's not bigger than a cock. Okay, so what is the pounds per square inch of that su- of that size? Enough to break. No, it. no, I need a number. Enough to break it. You're right on that. So it is theoretically possible that it's the- theoretically possible, but he wasn't putting all this pressure on the neck of George Floyd. And you can see that from the video. That's a trained officer tactical move. You, to do, you, do, under- you do understand that one, that's not a part of their training. And two, it is a part of no, their training. It it's is not. I don't Hi. know what you're talking about. Yeah. Have you gone to belay school? In fact, hi, my name's Kai. My family owned a series of firearms and uh, military training facilities, of which I oh, have okay. operated and trained under a variety of military and police uh, forces military. as well. Also, That's I've met different. the light. I've met and trained with Dave different. Grossman, who is responsible for the uh, the rise of the warrior cop training in America. I've shaken the man's hand in my life. That's so, not real so police. Here's, so, what exactly is work. your experience in this topic um multiple family members who have been police multiple have you yourself family members who engaged, have been firefighters trained and learned most of the firefighters, and participated people tell me the just of it but okay so it's all secondhand information and you have none yourself got it and um the legality of 
serving justice. Mm, interesting you speak on the legality of serving justice. What my you step, say. My stepfather is a judge. Oh, is it? Yes. So interesting you speak Does on the legality suck, as well. Is Cox and hell? Oh, this conversation has run its course at this point. I suggest, oh, I suggest you drink some water, sober up a bit, and maybe, I don't know, go back and get a GED and understand some basic academic principles before you try and engage, well, I don't in a dialectical really exercise. I don't get what you're talking about. I don't think you get think much you of anything right now. I think you kind of just right spout bullshit on the air. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, but you're a little too drunk to be able to parse that information, aren't you? No, I, I really don't think I am. Okay, so what's the math on that officer? I think mad. Oh, yes, I'm terribly, just terribly infuriated. My heart is breaking, by the way. I'd actually yeah, hope to have a kind of sad. I'd ha hope to have a productive conversation with somebody who didn't seem to understand the Overton window and the political spectrum, but instead, what I, I hope encountered to have a conversation was, with somebody who is a little bit smarter. Well, then I can pass you on to somebody else. Well, I kind of wanted to talk to you. Can you smarten up a little bit? No, this conversation has run its course. I wish you the best and good Why? luck. Why? Well, that was fun. Uh, let's see. There we go. Well, that was a waste of time. Um. I, again, what's up, Rose? Again, the welcome screen proves to be the ultimate filter. Um, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate filter in our community is the welcome page on the Discord community. When you join, there is a screen. There is a rules and guidelines section. And under the, uh, on the first two sentences, it says, there's just a few things to consider before you come in. Please click the check mark down below to acknowledge these guidelines. What we have found is that the longer it takes someone to get past that screen, the worse the conversation is going to be. We have seen brilliant from like Theo Theo came in having questions about anarchism, not sure if he still supported capitalism. Um, it was a fascinating conversation with Theo. He came in and was immediately past the screen. It was brilliant to, it was just a brilliant experience across the board. It was a heartfelt intellectual conversation and we, 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 we turned, like we turned new dirt. It was great. Um, and then you have the other end of the spectrum, such as this individual who had to be handheld through the welcome screen, stumbled through it, found his way into the community finally, and, well, you've seen this, you, you saw the performance. It's lacking, to say the very least. So, <sighs> I mean, I suppose we could have probably um, started the conversation with the fact that he didn't even understand the word bourgeoisie, the fact that he couldn't pronounce the word bourgeois or bourgeoisie, um, the fact that he basically almost called it boogie for boogie, uh, for all intents and purposes. Um, it was lacking. Let's just put it that way. <sighs> I feel, um, Booger Z, yeah, the Booger Z, fucking, I mean, this is, this is an admitted, look, education isn't everything, academic achievement isn't everything, but if you're in America and you didn't even manage to graduate, if you didn't even manage to graduate high school, then, um, good luck. Um, also... Here, let me. This 
is how the word is spelled crispy. What's up, Alex? The word is in chat now. Look for Proudly Radical. B-O-U-R-G-E-O-I-S-I-S-E. Uh, uh, I-S-I-E, sorry. Bourgeoisie, right? That's the word. Bourgeoisie. We did a, Boogie Seuss is an, is an acceptable alternate pronunciation on this channel. Um, but to understand the concept, and I mean, maybe you should start with Marxist philosophy, um, even though I doubt you could even begin to crack Marxist philosophy. Um, but also, you're going to need to read Schumpeter. Uh, no, you don't know. So anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, it is exactly Rev French. It's, it's, it's a bit much. Um, well, the bourgeoisie is separate from the capitalist class. Uh, Zix Arthur. Yeah, we know you like beer because you're drunk. Anyway, uh, if you maintain a, um, a dis if you maintain as a disruptive element, Crispy, I will be removing you from uh, chat as well. So rein your drunkenness in, and um, or leave of your own volition and come back when you're sober. That way, we're not forced to remove you. Um. Yes, as I was saying, academic achievement isn't everything, but having failed to even graduate high school in the U.S. and then never attempting to further your own education as a result of that leads one um, lacking, especially when it comes to a higher level conversation. It, it's, yeah, it's disappointing. Oh, Mr. Sir, don't even worry about it. I'll I'll kick you your points back. He's gonna he's gonna end up banned. Don't even worry about it, my man. Um I didn't say college. That's your own inference. That's your the implications of that uh, of you assuming that what based liberty tells me more about yourself than it tells me about you. So, uh, uh, it tells me about me. East Liberty. Um, so where is, there it is. My rewards request, reject all, reject all and refund. There you go. Oh, base Liberty. Um, no, I said to a degree, not a degree. As in variations in spectrum of methodologies of learning to a degree. See, reading and linguistic comprehension-based liberty is one of the things that you can get taught at a younger age if you pay attention to, the, uh, to these sorts of matters. So, anyway, good luck. Oh, by all means, it'll be on YouTube. Watch the VOD. Even if I misspoke, I'll roll it back. I have no problem. Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Anyway, oh, is Base Liberty just Scott? Bye, Scott. Uh, cupcake, yeah, Cupcake. Is Cupcake doing what Cupcake does? Cupcake, Base Liberty. Uh, let's see. What are Yep, follow Scott. Yep. What's up, Base Liberty? He follows Scott and Infrared. Holy shit. And then a bunch of fucking just an absolute shit ton. Holy shit, man. You got a problem, man. Just watch porn. Just watch porn, man. Jesus. Scott and Infrared, yeah. Um, Crispy has been removed. Yeah. 
Lauren Southern's in that list as well. Cupcake scanning the list too. Oh, Nova. Caboose. No, they're not really. If you, if you really start thinking about it, they're really not. Hi, hi, Alex. Oh, they all have authoritarian tendencies, right? Caboose, look for the authoritarian thread, right? Scott is a capitalist. He would u utilize economics to force you into situations you find absolutely uh, unfathomable. Has is an authoritarian who would use socialist principles to put you into a situation that would be absolutely untenable. He would use Stalinist principles, I should say, uh, to put you in a situation you find absolutely untenable. Lauren Southern is an authoritarian who would use Judeo-Christian slash Republican methodologies and ideologies to put you into a situation you find absolutely untenable. They're all authoritarians. Who, by the way, all fly the flag of liberty. They all talk about authoritarian methodologies under the guise of setting you free. So yeah, there's the thread you're looking for, Caboose. Um, I mean, we know he ate top secret papers. You know. Arbic Mux Fry, right? Yeah, Caboose, authoritarians. They love each other. They just all have different brands of authoritarianism they operate under. But the number one issue, um, what's up, Feckless? Alex from New Zealand 36, trans femme envy. Okay. Sorry, I just had to work it out in my head for a second. Last time I thought about what I define myself as, I called myself an anarcho feminist. You take many callers in stream. I don't take many callers, but when I I feel the mood, Feckless, the fact that you prompt you volunteered that much information. If you would like to have a conversation with me, I could really use a productive conversation after the shit show I just experienced. So if you're sober, Feckless. If you're sober, <laughs> um, feel free to type exclamation discord in chat and uh, get into voice chat and I'll move you to on air and we can have a conversation. Hopefully far more productive than what just occurred. I don't know, Feckless. That's, that's up to you. Um, sober is only illusion. You know what, Guggins? I agree. I agree. Fundamentally, philosophically, I agree, Guggins. But there's also the sort of like sociological analysis we have to apply. Like there has to be some so, so, uh, like societally based definition of sobriety. And let's just say Crispy was too far over the line. Um, one too many uh, natty lights. Type in your BAC. <laughs> Fucking blow. Dude, that, those days are coming. Keep an eye. Fucking some of these corporate entities will do that sort of shit. Meta. Fucking. Fu oh, Guggins. Yeah, he was he was well past the point of help. I, I, I offered him, you know, just calm down, chill out, drink some water sort of situation. Stop being so disruptive in chat afterwards. But, you know, once he starts just down that road of, well, you're fucking stupid. Give me someone smarter to talk to. I want to talk to you, though. So smarten up. Okay, sure. So it became a non-productive conversation very quickly. So, you know, remove him from the air. Standard policy. And then he um, continued to spam chat with nonsense, being drunk off his ass. Um, and so it was, you know, warning, 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 gone. And no worries, Feckless. Take your time. Do what you got to do. By all means. Um, yeah. I, I, I enjoy a good conversation. Um, 
I had an Addy thing, make me super boring person, but I thought it was pretty great. Just don't sleep the normal way these days. Oh, Slim. Slim. Fucking. Dude, I, I assume by Addy you mean Adderall. I, I just assume. Um, dude, fucking the fact that we prescribe that shit as much as we do to the people we do, vulnerable children's brains. There's nothing like a methamphetamine addiction. Fucking at age nine. That's, you know. Uh, Viva, you got a whole other ball game going on. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, and I know it's not technically methamphetamine. It's more close. It's cl- more closely to the amphetamine class of compounds. Blah 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 blah. Um, but yes, it, it is. I that's that's highly destructive. Uh. <laughs> microdosing meth to appease the oppressive society. I mean, let's face it, any drug that keeps you on the production wheel, keeps you on that hamster wheel, spinning and spinning, then society will approve of. Non-binary, thank you for the gift sub and congratulations, Kvass. But thank oh, it's your first gift sub. Thank you, non-binary. Um <laughs> yeah, somebody clipped somebody clipped my uh, A B C D E F G fucking <laughs> for those who were here for it fucking yeah somebody clipped that like that was that was a solid clip um fucking <laughs> uh A J by all means vent away um I also when I'm gaming. Like it's rare, but it's more common these days because I've I really want to I really want to love Project Zomboid, and I'm trying to like I'm in abuse I'm in an abusive relationship with Project Zomboid. Just put it that way. But I'm probably one of the only game streamers that doesn't mind the politics, right? Like you can you can go to town in my chat when I'm playing games, and a, like a majority of the game streamers like don't. You know, it's disruptive, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Let's do this shit. Uh, what is your good news, Alex? Good news, everyone. Hey, that's actually good news, not uh, Professor Good News. Uh, I can order my new computer next year, uh, week. Congratulations. You might actually play it. Uh, you might actually be able to play a video game worth of shit then. Uh, yes, yes, feckless. Go jo- join voice chat. I'll move you to on air. Um, and it's insidious. First, you're killing work and productive as fuck. Then, boom, three months later, you're Hollywood rating XR 30s and reading Wikipedia till the next morning. Oh, slim. That's fucking rough. Um, all right, let me kill the music. Oh, can I get you to count to five so I can get an audio check going, please and thank you? Um, yeah, Alex, well, you're more than welcome to join. Um, oh, wither, wither, feckless, you there? Um, bad wither, bad. Live in Montreal, uh, Montreal, Quebec. Uh, Anglo speaking citizens, I actually cannot work. I cannot progress in the system. I could make a French resume, but as soon as I go to a meeting, I don't qualify. It's been such a nightmare. I'm getting told I'm being too political. Um, yeah, no, uh, distant red. I don't hear them either. Um, I mean, rev by all means, but Ah, don't worry about it, Feckless. You sort you sort it out. If you need to disconnect, you can reconnect. No big deal. It is what it is. Um, do what you got to do on your side. Um, let's see. All right, so we speed ran the headlines. You know what? We're also. I was also considering doing a theory read somewhere along the way. Maybe considering, um, <laughs> Mister Sir. Um, let's see. Did we do? Yeah. What's wrong with this picture? Uh, maybe we could do another chapter in um instead of work um yeah i i was considering doing more theory read from bob black um along the way uh 
Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's barely political, AJ. I mean, at least for our fucking channel. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, I mean, that's some bullshit if there ever was. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, no, I mean, the one thing you can say is uh, we've turned the corner in America as far as political discussion goes. My generation, millennials, uh, my generation basically threw that shit in the trash can. Um, the the boomers were all about not talking about politics. You don't talk about politics and religion. The Gen X just checked the fuck out. And then um, millennials were like, yeah, that didn't work. Okay. Five, am I coming on? Uh, you are coming through, but I need to adjust your volume. Give me that five count again, please. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's about as high as I can take you. One, two, four, five. All right. <laughs> um, you're going to want to turn the Twitch stream off and listen to Discord instead because it will always be behind on Twitch. Yeah. Listen to Discord instead because it will always be behind on Twitch. Because we can hear the Twitch feed in the background too. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Yes. Uh, there we go. Just fiddling with this uh, this cord, it's a little fucky near the base. Do we noted rumble? Um, all right, gotcha. All right. Um, I mean, I don't have anything. I necessarily. This would be more of a. Is there anything you wish to discuss to uh, discuss with me? Scenario probably. Um, see, well, I'm not really up to date yeah, on New Zealand time. politics. <laughs> it's my first time here. I was just uh, going through recommended channels, of course, um, and uh, saw an interesting take, so I stuck around for that. Heard the dude on the floor, poor oh. guy. Um, <laughs> um, there is some stuff going on in New Zealand uh, currently. Uh, we've got one of those freedom convoys. Uh, you mean Canadian-style, quote-unquote, freedom convoys? Yeah, it's kind of spread around the world, huh? It's my favorite thing to come out of Canada recently. The fact that they, they have to be saddled with, like, traditionally, you know that would be, all <laughs> things equal, that would be American, right? That would be yeah. American. Yeah. Anywhere else, any other timeline, it would be it would be us guilty of this one. I love yeah. seeing Canadian-style <laughs> freedom combo. It's like, welcome to the club, bitches. This is what it feels yeah. like. I did not expect Ottawa to uh, to be the target there. I thought it would be somewhere in uh, United States. <laughs> I'm surprised Washington wasn't uh, <laughs> kind of targeted again after Jan Six. Uh, they they lock down these days. They they roll. No out, shit. They roll out the guns. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. um, yeah, we we have pretty strict gun laws here, um, especially since the uh, Christchurch. Um, attack on a mosque, uh, a bit of a slaughter. That was the first time we had anything like that. So they took away semi automatics as well, basically. People kicked up a stink about that. Um, most of the gun clubs have, you know, those boomers uh, kind of just had a get, like, have Gazden flags up or fucking Confederate flags, <laughs> um, which is really weird to see uh, really? in this specific nation of ours. Uh, just like this little. Hermit Kingdom, as uh, our ex prime minister likes to call us right now. I mean, we. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Che, dude. They 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 strapped it to the fucking floor. Um, in my opinion, is that of an American. So fucking, it's like you know that mosque should have had a couple of holders in there and just fucking turned around and dropped him and uh, called yeah. it a day. It saved the legal system a whole lot of time and effort. But, um, you know, other things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a highly contentious subject. And, like, obviously in any, um, quote-unquote, uh, revolution, uh, you know, proletariat, um, lower class, uh, should probably have access to weapons of that kind. Uh, <laughs> uh, rather than having to deal with, um, you know, just what we've got. 
basically. Um, you know, protein tactics, that kind of thing. Yeah, we we don't. Yeah, we Americans have like okay, look, look, fucking. There's the gun owners in this country, and then there's the idiots want the, that want the only gun owners in this country to be a bunch of fucking rednecks waving Confederate flags. Apparently, so like, yeah. that's it's pragmatism. Did one of one territory. It's like, look, unless you can magic these guns out of America, you're not. By the way, yeah, then it's not going to happen. Yeah, like they're just here to stay. Get used to it. Um, yeah. yeah. So I've come to that sort of um, understanding as well. I used to be quite, you know, get rid of the about guns. It yeah, when I was younger. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> it's it's it's. Uh, I find when discussing with like Europeans and just generally like foreigners who aren't Canadian. Right. Canadians get it. <laughs> Canadians get it. Like they, they understand American yeah. culture to a, enough of a degree that they're, they're like, yeah, that's not happening. But you talk to like Europeans yeah. and Aussies and that sort of thing. It's like, why don't you just guy do a buyback and get rid of the guns? It's like you sweet summer child. Like, yeah, I mean, the way that um, your political base is kind of structured, uh, the system is structured and just the massive amount of states and all the you know, kind of rights from state to state. And it's just, well, it's not, not even, it's, it's not even, le- it's not even legal. It's a part of our culture. Yeah. You might as well. well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you might as well, like you're a New Zealander. You might as well ask the all blacks to not do the haka. See what happens. True. Right. True, like, true, see true. what happens. It's, it's a part of our culture. Um, yeah, that's whether a it, talking of itself, of course. Yeah, whether it should be or not is, you know, mm. a discussion you can have. But the fact of the matter is, is it's fully integrated into our culture, and yes, so, exactly. like, it's way beyond legal status at this point. It's a sociological phenomenon. Yes, so, absolutely, I agree. Yeah, like, there's it, no it, way it's you're kind of you're getting rid of them. Yeah, yeah, it's just I guess you could say it's um pretty like. Duma vibes, uh, seeing like these companies making uh, bulletproof backpacks for children. <laughs> uh, that's fucked up. <laughs> that's that's it's rough. You guys got a real big problem over there with the uh, with the shooters. It's it's not it's it's not the guns. I mean, this is the one thing that like the the fucking right wingers and I can agree on. It's not the guns themselves. It's mm-hmm. this. It's the culture. And the lack of access to mental health care and how we treat individuals that need help in society and the hyper individualism of the neoliberal capitalism. And it's this confluence of events that Mm. lead up to problematic individuals then existing in a society that has very liberal access to firearms. Very liberal. Yeah. Um, I think there's a good conversation to be had there regarding... um, mental health because that that's something that i see pop up a lot when uh there's a discussion or a debate about america and its gun laws um and there's a lot of scapegoating i think going on there uh towards like people with just mental health uh issues uh i mean there should be probably um i say probably but there should there should be better checks better background checks for everyone um that's just my own personal little opinion. Um, oh, I'm having to look up here. All the rules changes here in New Zealand made a little difference for legal gun owners. Yeah. Rumb- tube feed brownie. <laughs> yeah, rumb- Rumble's a New Zealander as well. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, I noticed someone from down, uh, down south, I think, speaking up. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I would have to brush up on exactly what laws changed. This guy probably, uh, this person probably knows more, um, obviously knows more uh, about how it specifically impacts uh, gun owners. Um, you know, I'm in a leftist Discord group and, uh, you know, so we've got an NZ1 and uh, there's someone in there who um, loves going to the range, loves cleaning their guns, loves, you know, just doing what they used to do with their dad. He's gone now, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, it was a good time. It's just a shame that it's very right-wing-ish over here to be investing into the gun clubs and stuff. Well, Controversial change opinion, it. maybe. We have uh, we have the Socialist Rifle Association in this country. Hey, hey. 
So nice. like change it. Like that's, that's, I mean, anarchist praxis one oh one territory, like, you know, be, be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, Karina, mm. how much better do the background checks need to be? It, the fact of the matter is, is you would have to, you would have to change a fundamental principle of firearms ownership in this country to if successfully into, into, um, implement a background check that might actually make a difference. Um, mm. because in America, they are private property and private property yeah. can be sold and transferred. Yeah. <laughs> and there's just farmers markets where you can just rock on down and buy a gun uh -huh. without really any gun shows registration issues. Yeah. You just go to a gun show and you sell, you sell and buy firearms. <laughs> it's it, they are treated like cabbages that they're treated like any other fucking entity. You just f go and sell it. And that's that. Um, so you would have to, you would have to change a tent pole principle of, mm, mm. of um, firearms ownership in America, which you're not going to do, I assure not you. Not going to happen, no. That, no. that, 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 <laughs> gun <laughs> that gun show <laughs> loophole has been tried to be closed by Democrats so many times, yeah. and it fails every time because gun owners do not want that implement. They don't want that implement. I don't want to have yeah. to call the FBI if I sell a gun to my buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's understandable. Um, I mean, America is clearly, well, I say clearly, but um, for overseas nations and people in them, like myself, uh, it seems clearly that America has gone down a certain path, you know, when it comes to gun laws and, and just having it in the Constitution, 2A, you know, yeah. um, 2B, my bad. No, it's 2A. <laughs> it's the, sec it's the A is for amendment. There you go, Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, Sunrays. We tried that with the fire, uh, the NFA, the National Firearms Act. We basically put high, um, high tariffs on and banned importation and selling of like new, uh, machine guns essentially. And what it actually does is just create $30,000 machine guns. And so only the wealthy can then afford a, an H and K MP5. Right. Like that's yeah. that's all you're doing is like bringing a feudalistic element into it if you do that sort of thing. And because the, the market responds. Um, yeah. So I yeah, no, I, I I truly believe that the issue with America isn't. And for example, if I want my counterpoint to this. Mm -hmm. Britain has plenty of machete knife acid attacks. Right. They're still violent. Yes. They're still violent. Yes, they are still violent. Right? The, the mechanism of violence just changed, right? And you would yeah. argue you would argue that well, it's a far less efficient, you know, mechanism mechanism of violence in this case. I would argue that if you took guns away from America, magic wand. Magic wand. Tomorrow we don't have any guns. <laughs> you're going sure. to you're going to see people driving through farmers markets with a SUV or a raised Ford F150 on the regular. Yeah, that's going to happen. It, the issue isn't the gun itself. The issue is we're sick as a culture. Yeah, as a culture. Yeah, absolutely. I and, agree with you on that one. And so we don't have access to health care, mental health care, especially, but we don't have access to any health care fundamentally. And yeah. so we have no mechanism to route people who need some care to yeah. these things. So when they do inevitably spiral, they either end up in a couple of avenues and we all know those avenues, right? You end up either habitually in prison for a variety of crimes. Yeah. You end up dead on the street from drug addiction. You end up in the sex trade. You end up committing violence upon mm. yourself or others or simultaneously both, right? Like there's, yeah. there's a variety of avenues. We, we can fairly rel reliably predict you're going to take if you are in the sort of like spectrum of categories and sure, yeah. it, it's just a matter of well if you're going to do violence if you're in that if you're in that subgroup then it's america the easiest way to do violence is go grab a gun yeah get strapped yeah, yeah exactly so I mean, yeah you've got the um school to prison pipeline um no, oh, yeah, that's fucking, really yeah. Fucking uh, someone really interesting to read if you're ever, you want to know more about how America ended up fucked up way it is. Uh, John Taylor, oh. John Taylor Gatto, G-A-T-T-O. 
Um, he, okay. he was, he was awarded school teacher of the year, like three years. Um, he's highly educated on, uh, pedagogical practices in America. And he, um, he basically elaborates upon the, uh, the Prussian regimentation foundations of the educational system in America and the eugenics foundations. And so, oh, fuck yeah. yeah, so he, he, he from a, a highly decorated award-winning educator who is extraordinarily well-educated in his field specifically, um, mm -hmm. he goes in depth into like, yeah, this is how it's basically, it's basically a mecha, a methodology for creating regimented unthinking frontline soldiers for the Prussian military combined with a bunch of upper crust white eugenicists who many of which he'll quote, you know, that openly talked about how you need a, le a leading academic class of learned men. And then you need a base of unlearned un uh, unskilled workers who you can then put upon. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's capitalism's kind of footnote, uh, not footnote there, but the basis. You know, you need to have that lower class. Yeah, it's uh, to offload all the uh, work onto. Yeah, it's feudalism one hundred and one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, some <clears throat> fucking tag uh, or new ch new first time chat from viewer. Uh four one. Oh Jesus Christ! I never trust. I never trusted usernames there. Yep, nope. Created February fifth, twenty twenty two. Uh, uh, fucking four i g nine three r. Great username. Not suspicious at all. Um, <laughs> no. What do you think about the Russian Ukrainian situation? What do I think about the Russian Ukrainian situation? Um, somebody needs to fucking hand Putin his ass in a high hat. Um. Oh. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that, um, what's up boss? The, f the fact of the matter is, is that like as much as, you know, look, we talk about all sorts of, I'm a fucking anarchist for so fuck's sake, uh, <laughs> equal opportunity offender, right? I don't give a shit if you're America, if you're China, if you're Russia, if you're Lithuania, if you're a fucking town in, if you're fucking Canberra, I don't give a shit. Okay. If you're pulling some authoritarian bullshit, I'm going to call you out on it. Right. And we talk plenty yeah. about why America's fucked. We talk plenty about why China's fucked. We talk plenty about why yep. Europe and UK's fucked. And this is just one of the reasons that Russia's fucked. Putin is a, megalon a megalomaniacal authoritarian dickhead, the likes of which Russia tends to produce. And yeah, I, I mean, I won't say things that I mean, I looked a little bit at the laws, uh, I'm not the laws, the rules uh, going into the Discord. So, oh, yeah, you're fine. No, uh, um, giving, um, sort of calls to violence and stuff like that. But yeah, he, Putin, he, Putin, Putin has, ooh. is legitimately possibly one of the richest men on the planet. We don't know his true wealth. He and his cronies, yeah. his oligarchical cronies have evacuated untold amounts of wealth to the tune of trillions from the Russian Federation coffers. He came up as a fucking criminal. He was taking bribes from day one. Uh, that's how fucking the uh, port city ran. Basically it was, he's in charge charge of uh, uh, handling the uh, the, the shipping uh, manifests, so whether you got authenticated to come into port or not, uh, relied on how much money greased Putin's hand from day one, right? He's always been this grifter Army. fuck. And so what Russia is facing is a demographical collapse. The apprenticeship, uh, apprenticeship journeyman program that was created under the USSR, which was one of the few things they got right. Um Ooh. The journey, uh, journeyman apprenticeship program created some of the best workers as far as infrastructure, maintenance, and construction goes the world has ever seen. They built shit. They built it fast. They built it fairly well as long as it wasn't a nuclear reactor. And um, – <laughs> The high tech stuff they never did well. Missile control systems, yeah, launch control right? systems. The high, yeah, the high tech system that stuff they never did that well. But um, yeah. they they aged out. They forced into retirement all of their old masters, all of the experts in infrastructure and their systems. They forced out uh, forced out into retirement. They did not keep up the apprenticeship program. They're facing an utter demographical collapse. They have no expertise in building and maintaining their infrastructure on the scale and in the scope that they uh, they they need. They have minimal access to shipping ports and trade routes that they 
utterly require see the Black Sea. This is why they're encroaching. Well, yeah, we should come back to that, by the way. Yeah, this is why we're they're encroaching upon Ukrainian uh, upon Ukrainian territories. One, mm-hmm. they need port access, and two, Putin is facing a collapse of support, like all dictators of ne- inevitably face. Mm. He has to saber rattle continuously and constantly or else somebody might notice that he's got his hand in literally everybody's pocket. Yeah, I mean, strong man syndrome, right? <laughs> so he either keeps this ball rolling or he ends up like Saddam Hussein or Mussolini yep. or, or, or. Or take your fucking pick. Take a pick. Yeah, take a pick. There's it, so many on trial. It history, doesn't sure. doesn't matter. So he's facing a multifaceted uh, uh, exercise in in maintaining his power, and he's using um, plays straight out of Alexander Dugin's playbook uh, on geopolitics, uh, uh, foundations of geopolitics, and so he's utilizing Dugin's methodology to one saber rattle at home, two use divisive topics such as homosexuality, three align himself with the Russian Orthodox oh, Church, yeah. four use yeah. asymmetric warfare techniques abroad. See the U.S. Trump campaign, um, and five straight up military force. See Ukraine, um, which also utilizes a whole host of asymmetric warfare techniques such as um, uh, false flag attacks. See the original Crimean invasion. Um, so yeah, that random number person who I don't think has responded since then. Um, that is my point of view on the Russian Ukrainian situation shall as it, as it were, uh, it's very, very, uh, very much less NATO and Biden. It's very little Biden. Like as far, Biden's fucking, oh, no, Biden. this isn't, Jeez. dude, we had to wake Biden up to tell him some shit was happening. This isn't Biden. We're like, Hey dude, just <laughs> FYI, Putin's up to some it's shit. Brain worms a little. Fucking. <sighs> so, you know, yeah, this is far less NATO and far more Putin. And so, yeah, the Russian Ukrainian thing is Putin. Um, He's been wanting to get Ukraine back into the into the block for a while, uh, you know, ever since the yeah. USSR collapsed as well. Uh, Sunrise now, yeah, it's 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 a thing. Um, it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. And speaking of port port access and stuff, um, I'm gonna guess because that, that was a good, a really good overall summary that you did there. Um, so I'm I'm gonna guess that you've heard of. Uh, you know, the Antarctic melting a bit and uh, Russia planting a flag underneath oh, yeah. on the seafloor and uh, sending over 400,000 people uh, up to build a new giant port town. I mean, um, you know, fucking Canada and the U.S. are keeping their eye. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I'm trying to remember how many, because, um, you know, he's going to get some oil out of that uh, Google crust and... Uh, I think it's like uh, when it's fully going, it was going to be like one eighth of what we already consume globally per annum. Uh, so in a few years, that'll be added on to the overall world sort of carbon impact. Uh, it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, AJ, yeah, I mean, somebody read linked to my reading list. I don't uh, do. I, I I like Peter Geldeluz. Uh, I don't do his anarchy works recommended for uh, beginners, um, but I do rec- – Peter is one of those people I use for um, uh, like uh, what I get in it with um, vegans because Peter has a brilliant analysis of anarchy, veganism, why not? Um, and he does an anarchistic analysis of veganism as it stands in society uh, across most of the developed Western world and basically just absolutely shreds it. <laughs> He's like, you aren't anarchists if you're one of these people. And so I like Peter Gelderloos and Anarchy Works is totally worth reading. My be- my starting point, if you're not completely, yep, eyes glaze over, Government of No One by Ruth Kenna, Rev fucking right there she's ruth will explain some historical stuff some functional stuff some movement stuff she'll she'll walk you through what you need and then if you have thoughts beyond that um there's there's books beyond that but consult the reading list um 
Uh, I'm definitely going to be consulting that for sure. Yeah, yeah, Amaris Geldo is worth worth it. He's he he's he's a good writer. Um, I I just you know he doesn't have any like books that I put on the list that I I would want to put on the list. But Anarchy Works is definitely a hell of a. I, I guess I would qualify as an essay. It's a long essay. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things I I find uh, difficulty with uh, when it comes to theory is that um, I've got like unmitigated ADHD and uh, it's quite. Uh, uh, it does quite a number on my memory. Oh, of well then, uh, might I recommend Demanding the Impossible, A History of Anarchism? It's going to be on the screen shortly okay. for you. It's really short as I turn it sideways. Yep, got it. Yep, totally. Just a quick read. You'll breeze through it in no time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just saw the side view. Yes. <laughs> um, after... After that, maybe maybe consider property as theft by Proudhon. Ah, you know, def def definitely. <laughs> yeah, fucking, um, yeah. Uh, demanding the impossible is about eight hundred and eighty pages. Um, that that was uh, uh, property as theft by uh, Proudhon is his collected works. That's that's his entire life's work, basically. Wow. Um, okay. Cool. But that, what, that, that's going to be a one I'll be reading for a while. Yeah, what most people know, and I've got it tabbed out for like quick reference. What most people know from uh, Proudhon is what is property, Ooh. and that's you know, um, fuck it, that's his classic. Uh, what is property? It is theft, right? He's very very yeah. upfront. But this is this is all what is property. This is this is it. It's not huge. And this is the thing that oh, most... Oh, that's easy. Yeah, I can yeah. do that. No problem. Yeah, that's what is property, which is the thing most people need to read, uh, given our capitalist state of affairs, um, mm, mm. to sort of like snap it into position for you, like how anarchists analyze property. What is it? Oh. Why is it coercive? Why is it exploitative? You know, what is it that's underpinning this concept? And so, yeah, that's, you know, the book is terrifying, but the, the, the work itself <laughs> is actually not that long. Um, I mean, I used to be, you know, as a kid, like read at a high level, you know, one of those, um, kind of peaked, peaked young and <laughs> just burn out, burn out from mental health, uh, burn out from poverty, uh, you know, just stuff like that, that kind of. Kind of sad, but um, I mean, I can still read. It's just a little bit harder to focus on if I've got like a hyper focus going on, something like that. Yeah, that's. I mean, you, what is uh, demanding the impossible is? I mean, okay, so like demanding the impossible is a relatively Eurocentric and slightly South American um, view of uh, anarchism, um, and then okay. like I, I. I God, it's look. The fact of the matter is, is if you're gonna like discuss anarchism in most circles, it's probably your base information set that you're going to encounter most most often. That is like fundamental to discussion. Like it's not to be a dick about it, but the truth of the matter, like I have, I have a collection of books that's basically the global span of anarchism. Right? It's Chinese, it's Korean, it's uh, it's Russian, it's Australian, it's Filipino. I love the archipelago. That I, I will geek out on the the archipelago's fucking brand of anarchism. It's super interesting. But like, I have a collective works of like anarchism on a global scale, and it's you know it's wider than I can get on this screen. But yeah, Demand I respect the passion for sure. Demanding the impossible is a really good synopsis of the heaviest hitters and the more influential strains of anarchism throughout history. It's sort okay. of the story of anarchism. And so you could pick up Demanding the Impossible and read about like Taoist influence in and how like anarchists consider Taoists to be proto anarchists of sorts. You could read about like you can break it up into its constituent components and learn about like, oh hey, fucking Saint Francis of Assisi was actually super heterarchical. He was super decentralized. He was super anti authoritarian. And then the Catholic Church, of course, took his teachings and turned it into Franciscan monks. Oh, super hierarchical, super authoritarian, super coercive. Right? right? Like that's so you could you could actually take that very large book and it's 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 in workable sections that you could work your way through 
that you'd be like, you know, okay, I'll work, I'll work on the chapter on, you know, fucking some Greek anarchists today, or maybe I'll look at Spain, or maybe I'll look at Italy, or maybe I'll look at Emma Goldman, or maybe I'll look at, you know, some individuals or some movements, all of that's in there. And so do, I, I would oh. encourage you to not to be freaked out by the size of the book in its totality, because it is in manageable chunks. Sweet. Okay. I'll definitely check it out. I could probably get it from the library. Uh, you know, uh, you know, apart from the outbreak we got going right now, it's a it's available in all sorts of locations. Um, really? So you know, if you're really crafty with a search engine, um, pretty good, yeah. Uh, fuck it, Rumble. Thank you kindly, Rumble. Um, yeah, I, I, it's you know, it's a thing I put a lot of years of my life into at this point, um, both on the street and both as a theorist. Um, so, yeah. I can I can discuss anarchism. <laughs> like it's 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 one of those things. You know, you put a couple of decades into something, you learn a thing or two along the way. I suppose. Absolutely, um, I'm sure you've got a lot of uh, you know life stories. Oh uh, well, you know, we, we tell a few. <laughs> we we reserve a few. We tend to look at the you know sta- yeah. sta- statute of limitations on things before we discuss things. Um, you know, that's just smart. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, most of my direct action days are well past the uh, the statute of limitation. Um, so, yeah. like, that's... So you're know, golden. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I may not look it, but I'm, I'm, I'll be 40 quickly. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm turning 36 next, uh, next week, so... Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> the, the misspent teenage and 20-somethings and that sort of thing. I got a, I got a few years behind me. Um, yeah. But... No, yeah, you, you you do some stuff, and then you learn why you're doing some stuff. Um, those yeah, are, exactly. Yeah, those are my favorite anarchists. Do you take? Um, there's a question directed at me in the chat. Do you take? Um, is that cool to talk oh, about? By all or? means, by all means. Okay. You're not drunk, um, you're not drunk, and you're not insulting me actively. So who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to not be as reactionary uh, these days. You know, um, I've got borderline personality disorder as well and one of the main symptoms of that is uh not having emotional stability uh you know not really having the ability to control uh just kind of outbursts or passionate outbursts um so like i get it <laughs> um but they were asking about let me just what was my connection uh, how was my connection to my parents and teachers growing up? Hmm. Well, uh, gonna give you a quick, quick answer on this one because it's, uh, you know, your podcast, um, not podcast. You know what I fucking mean? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I got bullied a lot when I was a kid. Um, I was kind of like a fat kid, you know, so that comes along with the territory. I have, a, I have a last name that's easy to um, <laughs> make fun of, and I had glasses in school, and, you know, that's really all you need um, for your peers to, to start bullying you. Um, teachers had a couple of good ones. Uh, not really anyone nasty. I've heard a lot of nasty stories from, you know, specifically people in the United States. Um, I've got a lot of uh, culture sort of experience, or at least, United States goes to many shores with its uh, sort of cultural. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Sorry, choking a little. <laughs> Influence. Um, parents, they, they tried doing their best, you know. Um, upper middle sort of bracket. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, my dad wasn't really someone who wore the pants, if you want to use that terminology. Um, so it was quite one mum was the loud one uh, there were issues in my teenage years because I'd take the bullying and I'd bring it back home and just kind of internalize and then outburst from it so that's the answer um, two, two stories spring to mind uh, off of that Yeah. one uh, Hugh Laurie um, when, oh. when asked about um 
a woman could not believe that he was British when interviewing him a few seasons into the show House. And she said, but your American <laughs> accent is so, it's just perfect. He looked, at uh. her, he looked at her and said, you Americans will never understand how inundated the rest of the world is with your media. Yeah. And I, I took that away. I internalized that. I was like, no, that's, that's true. We literally just tsunami everybody with our culture, right? We use that media apparatus to like infect and invade and get a foothold in your country. So it's, it's, soft, Absolutely. it's, it's soft power, right? We have the military, yeah. we've got hard power, but that's soft power and we're very good at it. Um, yeah. and then second, um, as far as the hard stories coming out of the U S um, Bubba and there's many of them, but Bubba, uh, Bubba sprang to mind, uh, where I went to school in, let's call it rural for the most part, Arizona during high school. I lived all over this country. Um, there was, uh, there was this, uh, this gentleman, the name of Michael, AKA Bubba. We all called him Bubba, just big old fat white dude, just big old fat white dude. There was also this other <laughs> individual by the name of Justin, Justin, I don't know if he is uh, trans or not, but he definitely was gay. He definitely was oh. leaning in a very effeminate direction um, and oh. used opportunities such as Halloween to dress up full bore. Right. Well, it was a fun time. Um, he certainly made himself a target. Let's just put it that way. Right. Um, I'm gay. Just FYI. Um, but, I was not out in high school because of this very story. Bubba and two of his friends kicked down Justin's front door when his parents weren't home one day and threatened his life in a, with a baseball bat while standing there in full clan regalia, which was not an outfit. Jesus. It was Bubba's actual clan uniform. So if okay, anything no, told Twinkie young Kai, Maybe now is not the time to broadcast your alternative lifestyle, quote unquote, too, too loudly. It was an incident such as that. That's, um, man, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's awful. It, it is, really is. It is. Um, and uh, I'm sure you can predict the amount of punishment that was uh, heaped upon Bubba by the local police in the school. Yeah, although there's plenty of stories where it doesn't pan out that way and you get teen suicide instead. Oh, no, he didn't get punished at all. That was, uh, you yeah, know, that there was, was the point. Yeah, there was, Fuck. there was, there was none. Bubba didn't, didn't see any negative ramifications from that whatsoever. Justin survived <sighs> high school. I don't know if he survived past high school because I didn't keep yeah. in touch with anybody but one of my high school classmates. Um, but, Understandable. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> I come from a low decile um, uh, sort of suburb uh, of obviously the capital of uh, New Zealand. Um, I don't really keep in touch with uh, the people from back then. Um, like, I, I, didn't, them, I didn't like you in high school. Why would I want to keep in touch with you? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> yeah. Survived pneumonia three times, so I've got a bit of a chesty one um 50 50 percent of my lung tissue is scar Oof. scar tissue basically yeah. uh, rev rev that's of the many reasons i love you rev that is added to the list rev said i caught someone bullying a kid at lunch when i was a senior picked him up over my head and threw him in a holly bush very good i we believe in punching we, we believe in punching nazis on this channel again i'm not telling you to go out and punch oh, nazis yeah. i would never advocate for you to commit violence but i've read plenty of stuff on the air in and explained it no it's just fucking i've explained the logic <laughs> behind the, the the philosophy all right i'm not advocating yeah. for i'm simply explaining that really the only way to deal with an ideology such as that and several other authoritarian, vi violent authoritarian ideologies, they don't speak the same language. That's not, yeah. that's not a thing you can do. You can't talk them down. That's not how that works. The only way that you can address that issue is to make them feel unwanted in the space. Deplatform those motherfuckers. 
Oh, I don't even. Oh. No, no. I'm I I'm yeah. against, I'm a hundred percent against deplatforming any and all of them. I don't want anybody silenced. I don't want oh. anybody canceled because I want. Remember, inglorious bastards. Are you going to take that uniform yeah. off? Yep, he's gonna, <laughs> he's going to burn it. See, I like my Nazis where I can see them. Yeah, I understand that. Um, I I I am a staunch, you know, anti-fascist, and there's been plenty of times throughout my life where uh, violence, violent thoughts have almost turned into very violent action um, against such people, and I think that. Uh, I mean, there are some some that can be talked around. There are some people that can be brought down from such a pipe hole as fascism, especially the type of fascism that you see just running rampant through social media. Social media has really uh, not helped on that front. <laughs> I, you know, yeah, I'm. I, I just, as an anarchist, I have to be. You know, certain things. There's right there's an ethical framework that I have to operate by that mm -hmm. as far as like personal spaces are one thing, um, public mm -hmm. spaces are another. And I mm. I have to organize myself around the principle of, yeah, I don't, f f one, who handles the canceling, who handles the censorship. And that's not a slippery slope waiting uh. to happen. Right. And then two is a pragmatic one. Like I said, I, I want you to raise Ooh. your hand. I want you to tell me that I'm a fucking tanky or I'm a fucking Nazi or I'm a fucking Posadist, right? Like I want all of that information Ooh. just labeled right up front. So I know exactly who the douchebag is. I 100% understand and agree with you um, for a lot of it. Honestly, um, I'm just thinking of like uh, prevention of, for people who uh, are kind of like in the target, the, the, the headlights of their nurses, um, you know, uh, when they're recruiting. You know, preventing these people who might be from, you know, let's say like poor white guy. Uh, I kind of. think I think it behooves us to, oh God, this could come across as a free marketist. Um, it behooves us <laughs> to like outcompete their idea. Right. And sure, yeah. this, this is once they, they're captured, my, my, my personal ethical framework dictates that like, you know, is, is sort of, is sort of an act utilitarian standpoint. If you speak that particular language, um, then, <laughs> um, it is, it, it, yeah, no, it's time to just punch some Nazis, right? You're, you're in, you're the Nazi. Sorry, you might you might get punched, but prior yeah. to that, prior to buying in, it behooves us to outcompete their ideology, and this is my yeah. critique as a post leftist. Doesn't mean I'm not. Are you familiar with post leftism? Before I speak, yeah, I mean I'm not not over familiar. Basics. Um, it basically, it's an anarchistic analysis of the leftist spaces. It doesn't mean we leave leftism. It doesn't mean we're right wing. It doesn't mean it's just saying, look, as anarchists, we have a couple of tools we've figured out and we want to bring them to the meeting next time. And we, mm -hmm. we want to share them around because we think that yeah. like, maybe these might be some, a benefit to other people other than us. And so it's an anarchistic analysis of leftist spaces and born of that is this sort of critique that we talk about fairly regularly, not that much on air, but definitely behind the scenes on post show vo voice calls and stuff like that is nice. that um, leftists like proper left, proper left conceded a plethora of spaces. And it's the left's fault. It's not the alt right. It's not the right wing. They're the opportunists. Right. It's the left's fault for vacating blue collar things like electricians and carpentry. Why the fuck is that mm. a right wing space? You build shit. You're the workers. You're the proletariat. Why did we concede those spaces? Places like gyms. Those are hyper libertarian breeding grounds because they're all like personal responsibility, personal improvement, lifting yourself up by your own bootstraps bullshit. Right. They're all super is subjected to it. related to the United States. Um, no, I see this abroad. Okay. This abroad is, as well? yeah, like I, I can't speak to um, like Southeast Asia. Um, I can't speak to Africa, but I can definitely say like Russia, 
Europe, Britain, even though they consider themselves somehow separate now, you're fucking same part of the, <laughs> you're fucking European, get over it. Um, like, uh, you know, all of the sort of, yeah, like uh, China, like, yeah, that's, that, that is the authoritarians were gifted those spaces by anti-authoritarians. They left the anti-authoritarians left like the yeah. actual left. They That's just, they conceded these spaces. Uh, it's definitely uh, American centric. Like for sure. Like when I, I levy these critiques, this is a hundred percent American, but it's definitely, you know, <laughs> varying degrees elsewhere. But yeah, we, the left conceded a whole host of locations that proved to be ripe recruiting grounds for alt-right. And think of all the places that have disaffected young, angry white males. So many. Right? And so many. where is the left to be found in those spaces? Taunting them sometimes. Making their life more difficult, Right. Making their life more difficult, yeah. Not not giving them tools to free themselves from their oppressors, not giving them the philosophical toolkit needed to self-analyze, not handi- giving a hand- helping hand in the form of mutual aid and a- creating affinity groups with them. None of that. We mutual ostracize. Incredibly important. Yeah, we ostracize and mock them, which I believe mockery yeah. is a fundamental. Uh, tool, but it's the last stop before we punch them, right? Mockery. (laughs) That's, that's the humor is one of our strongest tools, but when it comes to like active praxis in spaces, it, it, you know, I've gotten, trust me, I've gotten my fair share of critiques from the Twitch leftist community. That's like, well, Kai tolerates talking. Yeah. I've had a Swedish neo-Nazi on the air and I talked to him. What? I fucking talked to the dude and we had a conversation Right. And I tried to figure out where he was coming from and to see if I could make any inroads before I cut him loose as, you know, dead weight. Right. Like, is there an opportunity? Okay. Yeah. You know, (laughs) but if if, the usual way. Yeah. But if, uh, well, I mean, it's fucking, frankly, the tankies are the ones who send the, send us all of our death threats. Um, we've gotten four digits worth of death threats from the fucking tankies at this point as a community collectively. Um, uh, and rape threats. The tankies really love their rape threats too. Um, yeah, like it's so messed up. It's so messed up, uh, especially that just reminds me of um how people, you know, people are getting sentenced for various crimes. Like uh, their punishment is going to be, you know, going to prison and getting uh, dropping the site, Basically, that kind of that kind of joke or that kind of like social commentary that just kind of is there under the surface is a real big problem when it comes to rape culture. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. And I forgot that your mom should have aborted you comments as well. Yes, they're big fans of those as well. Um, yeah, I, hilariously enough, the fucking, like, angry Nazi right-wingers are the, like, they're the least vocal of shit we have to deal with on a regular basis as a community. Woof. Um, oh. Yeah, the tankies are by far the worst. Um, they immediately go to like violence, rape, abortion. Like they're they're right there in an instant. Um, but All my experiences have been terrible with tankies. So. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah. because transgenderism is a liberal construct and would not exist under a socially conservative communist regime. And if we merely eliminate the bourgeois elements of society, then these disruptions within the psyche would disappear. That's very interesting they say that. I mean, uh, we could talk about uh, the Germany's uh, his, uh, what was it, the study of... Uh, I'm trying to remember the uh, the institute that got burned down basically during you know the Third Reich, um, and it was studying you know uh, trans culture, uh, trans people and cultures, various cultures. You know, it was studying homosexuality. It was you know just kind of using scientific method just to. Viva, what was the Viva? Uh, what was the academy that uh, was burned down? That was in Germany that was attempting to study like alternative sexualities, transgenderism, that sort of thing back in the day. Um, we got a couple of Germans in right now. They might know the name. Nice. Um, uh, I, I can almost remember the actual German, like, uh, well, 
you know, in the, in the German language. Uh, it's, it's quite, there it is, the Institute. There it is. <laughs> che. Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt. Yeah. Institute for Sexual Wissenschaften. Wissenschaften. No. <laughs> Institute for angrier, Sexual yeah. Wissenschaften. <laughs> Fucking German. I swear to God. The Institute for Sexual hey, Science. That's an interesting language. <laughs> um, they, people tell me it's a language. I'm not convinced yet. Um, <laughs> you know, then we can talk about uh, Dutch. <laughs> oh, Dutch, Dutch. That's not. That's Dutch is the sound that a bunch of stoners make when they get really baked around each other. That's all. It's not an actual language. It's just more groans and. Uh, guilty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, you know, somebody put it, I think it was Kez pointed out, uh, sorry, fucking Lexi, you know, you will be Kez for a while in our brains. Fucking Alex pointed out, um, I think it was Alex that like uh tankies, it, no, it may have been Viva. It was Viva. I'm sorry. It pointed out that Nazi, uh, the tankies are just, um, fucking Nazis a little with a little bit of red smudging on them. Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit of smuts. So, like, yeah, no, that's it, we we deal with all that sort of stuff. But I do believe in engaging in like the dile dialectical exercise, right? I d actually do believe in mm. rhetorical device. Um, and so, like, I do like to have conversations with those who are willing to have the conversations and that aren't operating in bad faith, because that's you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're talking with a neo Nazi, it's. Uh, it, well, you'd be surprised. Like, faith. I've. I've The ones that I've, I've elected to speak to, right, in fact want to discuss their position. Right? Like, it, it's, it's. As long as, like, okay, so the, the rule basically. They love to discuss their position. Well, but that's what I want to investigate, right? I want to investigate mm. how you arrived at this conclusion. What brought you to these conclusions? And is there any sort of, I'm a big fan of Socratic methodologies. I think they work. Um, I, you know, sure. why, how, what, you know, what the questioning, how did you get to this position? What got you there? What is yeah. your life experience that led up to this, this situation? I, I, I like to investigate those things. Um, mm. But as a general rule, we don't, I, I, I've, I've put my foot down on the end caps. The end caps are forbidden. They're just goddamn end caps. They they are as an ideology. They are fundamentally operating in bad faith, right? Like even if the individuals thinks they're operating in good faith, the fact that they are called so called anarcho capitalists, right, was created by Rothbard in bad faith per his own admission, right? So there is yeah, it's it's a farce. It's a yeah, it's a joke. It's it's Go literally it, so yeah. Like I I will not tolerate. In caps, I will immediately start dunking on them hard, um, and then we make a. Remember that town they founded? <laughs> uh, you mean you mean the the town that was disrupted by bears? Just massive invasion of bears. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the um, and then tankies. We we do make a distinction on the channel between classical tankies and neo tankies because we've actually I've had oh, conversations okay. with a classical tanky, like a real fucking tanky. Um, and they're far oh, more, damn. they're far more reasonable. They're, they're like, the more reactionary. Yes. Neo yeah. They're far more reasonable yeah. and far more grounded in theory, um, than you would ever expect them to be probably. But yeah, they're perfectly like by and large reasonable individuals. And one gentleman in, in particular from like, uh, from Yugoslavia, was like considers him a class himself a classical tanky. And I'm like, yeah, we'll make the distinction for you, my man. Like we have <laughs> classical Slavic tanky. Yeah, we have we have we have productive conversations and that sort of thing. And so I, I have That's no cool, problem man. with that. But yeah, if you're if you're an American, yeah, sorry, <laughs> you're 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 a neo tanky, and you're on yeah. you're off the list, my man. We can't have conversations with them. That's that's fair. That's understandable. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. um, I was wondering, like, this is just random because with, with the ADHD, like, it's, it's kind of like a cyclone of thoughts in there, and I can pluck one or two to focus on a, a you know, um, at a moment. But distractions can just 
gone. It's okay. We call that you know to- I mean? we call that Tokyo drifting around these parts. So feel free to Tokyo drift the the conversation yeah. if you need. <laughs> I was just uh, we're talking about how um, the USA has uh, a large amount of cultural drift um, to all all Western countries um, and then some, obviously. <laughs> and I was just wondering, like, does my does my voice sound? Somewhat Americans. I grew up on American TV. I kind of don't like hearing you have the l- Kiwi accent. You have less. You have far less Kiwi or far less. You have far less not American in you than one would initially expect for somebody who's like, yeah, I'm from New Zealand. Um, but you definitely don't sound American. Okay, cool, cool. Because I, I get I get kind of sometimes the opposite uh, from people around here. Yeah, because you don't sound quite, you don't sound Kiwi enough. No, I, 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 <laughs> I, I understand where they're coming from, but to an American ear, we would immediately like hear it. We'd be like, yeah, that's, I don't know what, maybe, maybe they might not be able to identify <laughs> it, but they'd be like, that's yeah. not from around these parts. Yeah, this is kind of more like a, I guess, a little bit of a highbrow sort of accent. Like, I'd guess, I'd um, guess Australian rather than Kiwi normally. Interesting. I don't think I had the nasal quality. Shit. I, it's a big. You know country. what I mean? It's a, it's like, a, it's a big yeah, country. I, it's a big country, and I've heard a bunch of Aussie accents. So, like, it's <laughs> you know, I've if, I've heard a few that like I I don't necessarily. Ident- oh, somebody wants you to say uh, fish and chips. Fish and chips. The use come through, Rumble. The use come through. Did I? Did I well, how'd I do? I don't know because you know my own ears. Uh, R- Rumble wanted uh, wanted you to say fush and chips uh, with the U. Fush and, yeah. fush and chips. Well, I just gave it to his fish yeah, and mate. chips to see if the eyes came across as the U's or not, and ah. they they come across more as the U than the I. Um, yes, uh, Rev was thinking. Va- oh, no. <laughs> va- Rev was thinking vaguely British, um, but may have arrived in the southern hemisphere eventually. Yeah, Rumble nice. agrees. The U's came through. Yeah, the U's came through. They weren't. They weren't eyes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Good to know. Yes, it's it, you. You most assuredly you would. We would. Any American would clock you as non-American for sure, though. Okay, let's go. Cool. Yeah. Um, um, there's the distant. Yeah. The. Uh, and you definitely do not sound like a newscaster. Okay, so that's good. Britishish, <laughs> yeah. Is there such a thing as Britishish? Um, fuck it. Yeah, it's called New Zealand and Australia and South Africa. Britishish. Um, there you go. Fucking uh, fish and cheese. I find accents really fascinating. You know, just from all across the world. Uh, uh Peaky. Uh, wait. There. Uh, she, her, they, them. She, her, they. No, 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 no. Uh, your pronoun. Sorry. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, they, them. They, them. Peaky, they. Sorry, just correcting something in chat. That's all. I thought you were just trying to like, get me to say some No, no. (laughs) Now dance for me, monkey. Dance. Dance. Um, (laughs) But um, yeah, you have non-rhotic R's. Um, It was what Peaky was uh, 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 pointing to. Um, Non-rhotic. So uh, yeah, the R... It's a rhotic R, 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 rhotic R, and then there's the Bri- the the British or New England. You can hear it in Boston still to this day. The ah, yeah. that's the non-rhotic R. So you know, park the car. Ooh. Yeah. So my um, my mother moved over um, in her teenage years with her family from Britain uh, to New Zealand, and I still ask her sometimes, like years and years and years later, uh, "Hey, mum, say ruler." He's like, mm, ruler, ruler. <laughs> um, a r- rumble, fucking rumble's got the New Zealander shit on on fucking tap. Uh, rumble said, I uh, asked you to say pin, pen, pan. Pin, pin, pan. Yeah, the A's give it away. They give it away, huh? Yeah, I mean, she just is non-American. I still wouldn't be able to pin you as a Kiwi, frankly. Um, a, a, a native Kiwi, a, a native New Zealander might be able to, but my ear's not tuned enough to the New Zealand accent. Um, as, yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah. So, yeah. That was interesting though. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm looking to get into 
screaming once we can find a bloody flat. Uh, oh, there's a blood. You can hear that bloody. That more like a use, like use coming out instead of O's. Bloody. <laughs> I like bloody. I like bloody as a word. I, I, I use it. Um, I use shite. I use cunt. I use bloody. Um, I also um, use right chuffed <laughs> from time to time. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I I don't I don't like I like. I like language. I like expressions. I like things that can express something in a way that maybe my native dialect doesn't express. So. Yeah, yeah. What do they call a fizzy carbonated beverage? Um, fizzy drink. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Cursed. Um, Cursed. Uh, we call what what British people would call. Uh, no, is it British or is it Americans who call crisps? I forget. Is it oh, no, no, that's British. Yeah. That's British. Okay, ours, yeah. We ours just are call chips. Them chips. Yeah, ours are chips. And we call the hot chips chips. <laughs> um, yeah, those are those are fries for us. Um, there's different styles of fries. There's a traditional French fry, but then there's like Texas uh, sure. or home cut or uh, home style fries as well. There's so we have different styles of fries, but the the potato chips, the crispy thin things, we call those chips. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, the soda thing, um, fizzy yeah. drink, dear sweet Jesus. Um, the, so- drink, yeah. the soda thing is split depending where you live in the U S um, there, Ooh. there is Coke soda pop and soda pop depending on what area of the U S you live in. But the predominant one is soda. Soda is, is said cool. by most people in the U.S. If you're in the Midwest, you will hear pop or soda pop. If you're in the South, you'll hear Coke. Um, and so it's such a massive country, and there's lots of regional drift. So it's re- it's really interesting it's, hearing the different vernacular from north, south, east, west. One of my really? one of my favorite like historical conversations was with this guy back when I was actively still in the field doing IT work. Um, I went to service this guy's business, like not far down the street from me actually. He was doing um, like Amazon resales and shit like that, but he was a mm-hmm. um, British expat. He had moved here, and mm-hmm. we got we got talking, and he he said, you know, we always make fun of Americans for not having passports and not traveling. He said, I didn't understand it until I moved here and started traveling around this country. He said, and then I got it. This place is so big. Like there's it's so, huge. there's so much, there's so much variation that, you know, it is an entirely different culture in places in the South versus places in the Northeast versus places in the Northwest versus places in the Southwest versus the West coast versus the East coast versus mid country. Right. Like it, it's, yeah. it's a very big continent with a lot of stuff and a lot of people and a lot of cultural drift as you, you know, linguistic, but cultural drift <laughs> that has occurred. Yeah. And, the- um, and, and also like, um, just the different types of scenery, the geology, uh, types of biomes that we have in America, really interesting stuff. Um, <laughs> around here we drink Coke while we wash our wolf, uh, our wolf in the creek. Um, <laughs> Where is the, oh my god what is a what in the crib Arkansas that's Arkansas, Arkansas. okay All right. um uh Astro Mouse um hey yeah, thanks my man um yeah first time viewer saying it too uh Warsh sorry Rev you didn't you didn't phonetically spell it um so I didn't give it to you Warsh um Ah, no way, no worries, Karina. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Astro Mouse, uh, thanks, and you're quite welcome. Um, but yeah, there's this fucking wash the car. Uh, Boston's notorious for that. They drop R's into places they don't belong, and then remove R's from where they are. <laughs> so oh, there's the very famous cup of coffee uh, sort of thing that a lot of people around the world do with the bo- try to do the Boston. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our infamous, if you're trying to mock a Boston act, do a mock Boston accent in this country is Pak the car and Harvard yard. <laughs> um, Oh God, Aaron earned an iron urn is one of my favorite videos of all time. Checker. <laughs> earn, earn, and earn, earn. <laughs> oh my God. Do, do we really talk like that? Yeah. Homie, you really do. Earn, 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 earn. Fucking man, they look so fucked up. It's, <laughs> they look so Aka, fucked up. When Aka, they play yeah, that. it's Baltimore. 
It's it's the Baltimore one. Do Baltimore accent. Speci- yeah, it's rough. It's fucking rough coming out of Baltimore. <laughs> oh, fine. Thank you, Rumble. And congratulations, Astro. You got yourself a gift sub. Um, Another one that gets uh, across the seas a lot is, um, you know, the Cali from the Valley. Yep. It's far less prevalent now. It's it's sort of yeah. washed out and watered, out, uh, like dispersed into the American diaspora, as it were. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the internet changed things. Yes. It, it really has. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I know some linguists in uh, the UK were tracking uh, dialectical drift and homogenization uh, as a result of internet exposure from early life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and I was that, you know, I'm, I'm like, uh, like I said, like 36 days. So when I was growing up, it was in the 90s. And God, there's so much wacky American products that made it, made their way to to our shores. We had fucking purple tomato sauce at one point, oh, green shit. and purple tomato sauce. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, it's, it's, it's interesting because, like, you know, there's the concept of nostalgia and there's just so much happening these days that like i mean back then at least you had fads that would last a while there it is and fucking just, here we go fucking so much content heinz easy squirt green and purple there it is yeah there it is it's heinz ke- easy squirt yeah <laughs> fuck it yeah. yeah that's green and purple ketchup look at that glorious <laughs> glorious horror from from my youth um I had stretch. I had a stretch Armstrong. Um, you remember those? Yeah. Yeah, I had one of those, and until I left them out one day on a hot NZ summer day, and uh, kind of when I picked them back up, I split them, and I'm like, "Oh, hey, this is kind of sweet. What is this stuff?" It was probably cornstarch or some shit inside. Oh yeah, caboose, caboose. You know how you do it, actually. This is, you're going to be, you're going to fucking caboose. You're going to absolutely be just, you bleach, not using bleach, but what you do is you add a chemical additive to the ketchup to bleach it out first. Then you add the food dye. So what you have to do is transform the red tomato into sort of a white bland color. Then you add the insane food dye to it. And there you go. Yeah. Disgusting. (laughs) <laughs> we've got capitalism breeds innovation mm, yeah yeah sure does yeah it's 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 a whole fucking thing um i i have seen um oh god it's been years if i could find this video it'd be amazing somebody um it was a water filtration process and the water was all the way, like it was c- technically clean, but it was still murky. Yeah. And the guy just walks okay. along and dumps a cup, a cup of something in the water and it just all fucking mm-hmm. clears. Yes. And you're just, you're just left sitting there going, but it's not technically clear. Is it it's not technically like, that's clear. just <laughs> chemistry at work. That's not actually yeah. like crystalline crystal clear water. That's just mm. chemistry magic. Mm. And chemistry was my favorite oh. subject at school. I was a dropout, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's food scientists are a scary lot, y'all. Food scientists are a scary lot. Did um, you see that person who's uh who's tempered chocolate so that it, it's just it what is it called? Scintillates? Have you seen that shit? No. It is. Let's check it out. It's fucking beautiful. It just reflects just all the colors of the rainbow. Yeah, apparently you can temper chocolate uh, to have that kind of amazing look. Of it. Let's shove it off on the stream. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah no. Um, How sick is that? There you go. This is, this, is scintilla- this is chocolate that scintillates. You're welcome, chat. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. Food chemists. Incredible. It's it's iridescent chocolate. Yeah. Uh, that that's it. Sorry, wrong word I used since my bad. 
Fucking yeah, that's okay. I mean, yeah, chemistry of the time. Well, I was a kid. I love that shit. I mean, to be technical, scintillate works, right? Like, yeah, it does. Okay, sometimes I kind of get like uh, along the right path, or I think I'm on the right path. Sometimes I like hit. Sometimes it's a mess. Oh, it's kind of hard to explain. To someone, I, I'm sorry. This is me just kind of guessing that you're not ADHD. I, no. Forgive me. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of hard to explain your, how your own brain architecture works to someone who just doesn't experience it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um. Yeah. No. I. I. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Um. Sorry. Just checking Discord. Um. All right. Cool. And Karina, I saw the the meme channel as well. Well, um, to answer that person, no, shut the fuck up about it. Um, but yeah, uh, distant red, dude. Yeah, food photography is absolutely disgusting. It's nasty shit. Yeah. Um, it, it just the tricks they use, bleach and soap and varnish, mm -hmm. and it's just it's disgusting. Definitely not meant to eat, but like supposed to kind of look like the finished product. <laughs> yeah, um, the 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 splash in the sodas, plastic usually. Um, they use no. yeah, oh yeah, they use eyeliner for the grill marks on uh, on like red oh. meat. They just paint those on. Um, With like fucking eyeliner. <laughs> yeah, most of the meat you see in um, photography is actually raw. They just they varnish okay. it and paint it up like a chicken. They they don't bother oh. cooking the chicken. They just paint it. So it, yeah, yeah, it's so much easier. Um, they use glue. They use water. Like if you see, yeah, motor yeah, oil. You can go into a deep dive on this shit for oh. like an hour or two. Easily. Oh yeah, the motor oil for maple syrup caboose. Yep, that's that's <laughs> super common. Um, the the milk that you see in like cereal commercials is often yeah. um, glue. It's Elmer's glue, glue. Um, watered down. That's Good how, old Elmer's. Yeah, that's how that's how they get that. Um, you've never seen ice. <laughs> you've likely never seen ice cream in an ad. Know that it's almost always yeah. it's almost always mashed potatoes, wood paste, and glue. It, it's, it's pretty. I'll give them this. It's pretty creative. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, they, uh, the fruit is almost always sprayed with uh, deodorant, uh, cause it gives it a waxy shine. That's, that's their trick for the fucking deodorant. Um, the, uh, uh, cakes, uh -oh. cakes and hamburgers. Um, <laughs> so much cardboard, so much cardboard. Oh um, yeah. yeah, the coffee Glue for stretching cheese. Yeah. Uh, the coffee, uh, if you see bubbles on coffee. Like when they pour the coffee, yeah. the fresh brew, that's soap. Soap bubbles, yeah. yeah that's soap. I figured. Yeah, that's soap bubbles. Um, the fucking <laughs> uh, ice cubes are almost always fake. Um, when you see steam coming off of food, there's usually like a a a, a, um, a like portable fabric steamer for like getting the wrinkles out of your like clothes. There's usually one of those right off camera. It's like right underneath the fucking piece of food. Um, that's how it's actually steaming. It's it's uh, so many pins. Um, I remember a story about one of the Carl's Jr. shoots. And one of the models was, was, was saying like when they handed her the burger to take the bite of, they told her specifically no. like you have to bite this section. If you bite anywhere else, you are going to drive a fucking pin into the top of your mouth. Ugh. Oh, like, Ugh. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's dude. They they pin those fucking things like to the nth degree. Nightmare um, zone. Um, oh my god. Yeah, man. Mouth mouth and mouth injuries freak me the fuck out. Like, <laughs> I've got some pretty bad teeth. Uh, I've got like chalky teeth. Um, so I have to, you know, go into the dentist every now and then and basically just get them to fill up a new filling. At least it's better these days. It's not metal. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but I get nightmares about mouth just injuries. Thanks to shit like this shit. I think it may have been Kate Upton. Kate Upton? Who did the, who was the one who talked about like 
how very specifically. Yeah, I think it was this photo. I'm pretty sure it was this Ooh. fucking photo that that they they instructed her do not bite anywhere else or you will get an oral injury from this burger. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, can you just imagine a fucking stick in the roof of your mouth? Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, exactly Good right. Um, yeah, somebody actually eating a burger in a commercial would end up with the tomato slice just flying out. Um, yeah, probably. Jeez, Rev, yeah. Uh, the teeth thing. Oh, God. Um <laughs> Oh, let's see. What's Rev saying? Hey. Oh, God. Uh, it looks like the U.S. truckers, we may get a Canadian-style truck co- uh, truck protest here in the U.S. as well. Oh, no. My condolences. I mean, Canada, you are just spreading the worst to the world. Canada, what's going on yeah. up there? You guys okay? I'm just spreading that convoy fever. That's bad. I mean, look. In the U.S., we have... Yeah. We have reference for this because when BLM and uh, various anti-fascist movements were protesting in the street, the right-wing uh, conservatives of this country very explicitly stated that in their view, anyone who blocked traffic should be run yeah, over. Right yep. So I remember that. I'm just saying, like, as long uh, as they stay in convoy form and keep on moving, that's fine. But if they block the flow of traffic, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Good for the gander. Yep. Just saying. <laughs> yep. Just saying. I've still got to, like, the whole of today because it's, um, it's the 11th. So I'm going to you guys, but I don't know, X amount of hours um, to catch up on what's been happening in wellington like uh at at parliament um just just like tokyo drifting to this side um yesterday was a lot it was a lot watching i I had to live up and it was a lot just taking that all in it was a really doomer-esque sort of experience to just watch it unfolding and especially listening to what the the crowd the mob had to say Uh... awful Let's see. Uh, 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 Sonia Blue said, it's okay. The Kiwi one's going to get hit by a weather bomb. Not sure how many people will be on the parliament lawn tomorrow. Um, They said that it was going to happen today. Well, tomorrow, today, fuck, depending on what time Uh, zone the person is talking from. Uh, Karina, Karina, we were in fact talking about burgers. Yes, we did that to you. Karina was drifting off <laughs> Karina was drifting off to sleep listening to the uh the stream and said I just had a dream eating burgers then I bit into one and my jaw broke off and I'm still oh. craving a burger but what the fuck Sorry about that Karina oops <laughs> Uh yep Karina 100% um yeah weathermen are never accurate so it tracks Who did I hear um Oh so I heard somebody say fireman woman it was the it was fireman woman. Yeah, it was nice. the most hilarious. He's like, you know, and and this fireman woman came out to the call, and I was like, you know what? He's trying. You know, he's got the spirit. <laughs> right? Like the, the the instinct was there to the, the word yeah. is fireman for this dude, but he wanted to recognize that it wasn't masculine. It was a woman. You know, he he the spirit was there. I was okay with it, and it was amusing. <laughs> he was like, I forget what it was. This dude just goes, and the fireman woman responded. I'm like, you know what? Give him a pass. It's funny. <laughs> I'll laugh at it. Yeah, I'll laugh yeah. at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I came into my uh, my gender variance like, uh, at a later stage in my life, which is still a source of bitterness because um, I truly feel that the adults in my life when I was younger kind of just dropped the ball, let me down, uh, and... and Numerous ways, <laughs> but yeah, we didn't even, you know, in the nineties, we had no idea uh, over here in like New Zealand, or at least in my little neck of the woods, uh, you know, trans people existed, just wasn't talked about, wasn't discussed. Um, you know, this was all just as the internet was starting to slow roll its way through the nineties. Um, it's just disappointing. Yes. 
Um, but I'm happy for the Zoomers. I, really it's the de- I'm not happy. The de- it's the definition of bittersweet, right? Like it's, <laughs> it's literally like, you know, good for you guys. But if I have to look at one more happy, happy picture of like two 13 year old gay God. dudes, like actually getting to date in school, you know what? Yeah. It's bitter. It's, it's, it hurts. It's bitter. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's the definition it, it of bittersweet. Like I'm happy for you. I am, but I swear to yeah. God, I want to murder you just because I'm so angry at everybody else who prevented me from having it. Right. Like it's, it's like, yeah, I, I yeah. feel you on that one for sure. It, it's awful. It's an awful feeling. Um, and I have that like for both my sexuality and for, um, you know, the gender period. It's uh, something that I came out in like 2016, came out as pan, came out as, you know, um, non-binary. And uh, I'm proud, you know, I'm happy I did that. I'm proud I did that. And I'm glad that I got to do that before I got older than I already <laughs> had, you know. But it really does suck that it took till that point in my life. <sighs> but what can you do, huh? Make them pay. What? Except huh? stay bitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and, uh, Sonia was saying that apparently it's technically a cyclone tracking to make landfall Sunday. That, all right, cool. Um, all right, uh, Karina, good luck tr- trying to sleep again. Um, and yeah, <laughs> fucking God damn it, Rev. Now I have that stupid fucking song in my head. Um, it's not a stupid fucking song. It's actually a solid song. Um, and who is solid song? Um, who is just overused in the late nineties. That's all. Like, it really was, wasn't it? Yeah. Fucking. Um, and who asked about the Q and honors crimson, uh, the Q and honors from what I could look, I just looked the Q and honors are not still riling up Houston. It looks like they moved over to the, uh, uh the butterfly sanctuary in mission, Texas instead. Oh, uh, that's lovely. Um, yeah, they, they forced it to close down because it's the focus of a conspiracy theory. They think that like kids are being trafficked at the butterfly thanks sanctuary. Are you or some serious? Like that. Yeah. So one. they had to, on, so they had to close their gates because the Q and honors were going to probably shoot the place up or blow it up knowing them. They um, already had their fucking pizza gate. Gee, leave the butterflies alone, man. Um, it doesn't matter what position, political position you have. Cops shouldn't rear neck and uh, rear neck choke a naked restrained lady. I mean, look, maybe that's oh, maybe there's that, well, that happened over here. Yeah, maybe that's there's reasons to choke out a woman who's already restrained and has literally no weapons whatsoever or even cloth to defend herself with. I'm sure somebody could find me that reason. I, uh, you know. Somebody wearing maybe a red trucker cap. Um, I personally can't think of any reasons, but yeah, exactly. No. Uh, um, you don't know what she did before. Exactly. Like fucking crispy. Fucking. Yeah. You know. um, sure. Sure. <laughs> I, dude. Um, yeah. Uh, Crimson. I'm the same. I was hoping the QAnon honors would just set up like a permanent camp there at the grassy knoll. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. You go see the JFK assassination site and you look across the street and there's the QAnon honors. Be a wonderful Look, addition. They're just waiting for him to raise. Yeah. Um, they said he was coming back. Um, there was a pretty bad video that came out of yesterday's live uh, coverage of, of the parliament on the parliament lawn. And that was uh, dragging a naked woman by the hair out of the, out of the uh, crowd uh, to, you know, they put a, they put a um, fucking uh, towel over her. Um, she tried to knock it off, but yeah, they dragged her up. But because it was, but she was up. because she was naked. Um, put the towel. Y- yeah, no, no, uh, no I'm not so sure about grabbing her. Okay. Uh, hard to tell. Hard to tell. I mean, they were oh, making a bunch we, of. Arrests. We have like, the video. We, we Never got mind. Over, like, sorry, go on. Well, we have the video. Rumble apparently put it in shared content. Um, okay, she's yeah, it's blurred, so it should be okay. She's blurred. All right, I just had to check. All right, let me jump over there. Yeah. And is this... Oh, no, this is top screen. Sorry. Um, fucking... There we go. You can see what we're talking about. There we go. Hi, hey, hey. Oh. Yeah, we got it on camera. We got it on camera. We got it on camera. What? <laughs> 
Look at that. Her, her head, head isn't the problem. <laughs> we must cover her head. Keep the line. This yeah. All over the world. No. But she she manages to get her arm up there and you know fucking to get off those guys in the green. Uh, I think the medic personnel. The problem is, it's like, see, this is the problem. Um, mm. As an anarchist, <sighs> I have very mixed opinions on these things, right? Like, this is the fact of the matter is the Freedom <clears throat> Convoy. It's a stupid fucking name. Um, but the free, that's how, you know, it was actually started in the U S and we, we exported the shit yeah, to Canada because yeah. it's called the freedom yeah, convoy. It, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that's, I'm sorry, y'all. We have a trademark on that word at this point. You see some shit yeah. labeled freedom. It started in yeah. the U S. Um, but like, yeah, like it, people like the January 6th thing here, people would come in and like, well, what's your, you know? Yeah. You know what? In fact, according to the founders of this country, they had every right to do that. Right. Like if you feel that you're you're you have no method of redress and that the system has set you aside and you you voted and voted and voted and participated and still the change like yeah, that's in our DNA in this country to do that sort of shit. So like it's valid, but it's not like it's it's a double edged sword situation. And so I personally feel their, their reasons and their methods and their, like, everything surrounding it is fucking foolhardy and bullshit and full of it. The same goes for the Freedom Convoy. Yes, you know what? Fucking, yeah, you have every right to do that. You have every right to participate in um, civic disruption and civil disobedience and those sorts of things. Like, that's exactly what it looks like. It's just being done from an element and an aspect that is potentially civilization ending. And so yeah, I mean, I don't think that 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 lady shouldn't have been pulled out. I mean, apparently, some people are saying that like um, she got naked so that like the male cops wouldn't grab her. Um, and there was a lot of uh, weird legal advice going on through the loud one of the loudspeakers or one of the people there. Uh, like, if you say I. I don't understand. I do not like. I do not understand. I do not consent three times. Uh, they they have to let you go. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That. So, uh, I nice to see we exported sovereign citizenship to you as well because that's what that is. Yeah, that's, that's sovereign citizenship. Yes. Yeah. It's, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Loving it. It's totally it's, not dying inside. Yeah. People fucking ask me that one all the time, like about what's your opinion <laughs> on sovereign citizens. I'm like, it's fucking magical thinking. Is it even if yes. it's true? Even if it's true, even if in 1881 the U.S. Const the, the Constitution for the United States was replaced with a, a corporate document that is the Constitution of the United States, and there's a difference between the the small case and the uppercase version of it, and that the Washington D.C. is a corporate takeover, and all these things that they say, and that the the fringe on the flag is the Admiralty flag, and if you say if you differentiate when speaking to a cop, that uh, I have a right to travel, I am not driving which is a commercial activity, but I am traveling, yeah. which I have an inalienable right to, even if you make all of these magical distinctions, they're still going to arrest you and throw you in jail. You know that, right? They like, don't, though. That's the thing. They don't. Oh, they, yeah. They're just fucking brainwashed by this shit. Jeez like, that's, 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 that's what happens. It's fucking, you end up in a gun battle with the fucking Bundys or some shit here in Nevada or you end up with a Ruby Ridge situation or you end up with fucking X, <laughs> Y, and Z and you're like, yeah, like even if you're right, it doesn't matter. They don't, mm -hmm. th the system doesn't recognize that magical bullshit thinking. So like, what do you think's going to happen? You say, you say, I do not consent, I do not consent, I do not consent. Oh, shit, they got us, boys. Everybody they stand down. They said the magic It's kind word. of wild to see, uh, like, when they get touched by the police, they just, like, the fight goes out of them. Yeah, it's, oh, oh, that was, dude, that was the hilarious thing about the January 6th thing here, is a whole bunch yeah. of fucking white people got all wild and out for the first time in their life, and they're like, they, they, they treated us like criminals. And then, like, they fucking shot one every per every person of color, every leftist activist in this fucking country and abroad was like, "Welcome to the party, sweetheart." Right. <laughs> so what happens? You just learned yeah. what the boot heel actually feels like. I've got something here for you um, from from yesterday. Where's your content, mines? Uh, what what channel should I post it? Uh, shared content. If it's like link. 
picture, video, shared, that sort of stuff. Shared content. There we go. Yeah, it's just a link to a Twitter um, post. Uh, there were lots of convoy vehicles with this totally legal notice on display. <laughs> Notice yeah, to agent, in, right? oh God, that's, yep, Sovereign says, because he's an agent of the state, so they're talking about the cops. Notice to agent yeah. is notice to principal. Notice to principal is notice to agent. Oh Lord, they're talking about the sovereignty, the sovereign itself. Legal notice. <laughs> Anything attached to this vehicle without prior written consent will be removed by force if necessary and will incur a removable fee, uh, removal fee of $40,000 payable on demand. Failure to understand this notice or uh, understand this notice or notice this is uh is uh, notice is inexcusable according to admiralty law get out of debt free.org slash parking notice yep get out of debt um, oh yeah yeah it's, it's the admiralty law thing like i said the fringe on the flag do i speak i did I, I've spent a lot of years. I speak this language for the most part because <laughs> you've studied it. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know. Yeah, I, I speak sovereign citizen. I speak spirit science as well. Um, oh, spirit science! Nice. Yeah, that's we Rev fucking Rev and I, but absurd Buddhist Rev uh, Rev Roth and myself and Chad all have like a soft spot slash a trigger button for the fucking spirit science crew. They're always, you know, I saw someone earlier being like, God damn fucking spirit science. Yeah, no, it's probably was Rev. Um, yeah. like we, yeah, we all fucking, we get those, those on the regular too. It's like, Oh, if you, we, um, Oh yeah. Oh no. Aka. Oh, Aka. It's you have a rabbit hole and a half to go into. Um, if you do not understand how they're claiming maritime law on land, it's, it's a beautiful conspiracy. It's wild shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, oh God, it happens fucking fairly regularly. There's one dude we make fun of all the time. Cuckoo nut TV. (laughs) Um, he fucking, he's in, he's in that like hardcore spirit science cult camp, but believes he's an anarchist. So he does all of the word play that the spirit and science crew crew do. So he doesn't pronounce it, uh, pronounce it anarchy. He pronounce, pronounces it anarchy. Of because, course. Because, you know, words are spells, spelling words, Not words lucky. are magic. Therefore, the, when you cast a spell, when you pronounce a word, the reverberations through the ether, through the vibration, uh, the vibrations through the multidimensional space actually cast that word. And so the intention and the inflection behind the word matter. So he not only understands you, he understands you and overstands you as well fascinating stuff oh yeah they're fucking dude yeah i speak crazy at this point it's fucking ridiculous <laughs> i fucking speak tanky i speak fucking spirit science i speak sovereign citizen i even speak fucking nazi to a certain degree at this point it's fucking ridiculous yes con science it's not conscience it's con science con- yeah con science oh of fucking like <laughs> yeah yeah it's the shit I have had to learn to like argue against in, in this mm-hmm. little like endeavor I have engaged in the last couple of years is kind of insane. I'm, I'm always impressed by people who are like, I'm going to say more neurotypical uh, ha- and, and the ability to just like learn all the stuff and be able to access it in the moment. It's just like, damn, that fascinates me. That sounds really good. I could use me some of that. <laughs> It's, I mean, okay, so, wait, hang on. Um, I think I have, uh, I'm trying to find you, uh, who wanted it? Um, I'm trying to find the the sovereign citizen citizen (laughs) obsession with maritime law to get you a quick... uh, Just a a quick breakdown so you don't have to. Um, Let's see. Because I want it, I don't want an analysis from like fucking SPLC or Rational Wiki. I want, <laughs> I want the fucking, I, I want the the crew to explain it to you because it's fucking crazy as shit. Um, Lexi, I'm jealous. Uh, in chat, I have ADHD and I can do that because I have a hyper interest in it. Okay. Oh, that's fucking. Oh, 
that's not a fucking okay. So I can give you the basic explanation. I, I, I really would love to provide you with like their take on it because their take is beautiful. It's beautiful. How strong is your Google foo? <laughs> um, here's what it, so at, at maritime law and sovereign citizens basically is born of article three, section two of the constitution, which assigns a uh, jurisdiction of um, maritime uh, cases to the federal cases um, in uh, to the federal courts under U S jurisdiction. And so anything involving like shipping disputes or um, like sailors labor uh, claims or stuff like that, that's actually all handled at the federal level. And that's laid out in the constitution, but it has to do with a conflation between maritime law and federal uh, oversight um, by the sovereign citizens. And there's, there's all sorts of like insane explanations that like point to like the, tr the breadcrumb trail. Like I said, the fringe on the gold fringe on the, the flags is, uh, is an admiralty, uh, 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 admiralty flag. And that's one of the signs that you're supposed to look for that you're actually in a maritime court. Um, and so it's, it's this crazy fucking rabbit hole conspiracy, but it actually has to do with just a confl a conflation of the, uh, of article three, section two that prescribes which, which courses, uh, courts oversee maritime cases, but they take it as maritime law governs federal courts rather than federal courts oversee maritime law issues. And so, yeah, it's, it's that. <laughs> it's you know <laughs> fucking it's crazy it's crazy it's magical thinking based off of misinterpretations in 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 like r remedial interpretations of technical documents and so imagine a person imagine a person who knows nothing about technology reading like an ISO specification or something right or an IEEE Ooh. specification document Right. They, they have no idea. These are people who have zero understanding of legal structures and yeah. they're reading technical documentation. So they don't understand it. And then they make some shit up. I, it's wild. Uh, a possum shaman. Thank you for the follow. My man. Uh, brain worms are a hell of a drug. Let me hit that follow as well. Wow. Yeah, thank you for the follow. Uh, what am I supposed it might to be, might fe be. feckless WGTN? Oh, but it's just because some motherfucker has already taken my my handle. Fair enough. Feckless. So I, to, I just typed in my you know my city Wellington. Oh, is that is that the the for is that the abbreviation for Wellington is WGTN? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much that. Okay. Um, yeah, like we have like PDX for Portland. Um, oh, there you go. Uh, zero understanding of legal structures or basic physics usually. Yeah, that seems to be a fucking thing. Um, uh, let's see. In don't forget, New Zealand. We also have Maori, uh, Maori. Sorry, uh, Maori uh, sovereign citizens with Maori, Maori uh, with their own passports and driver's licenses. Um, yeah, WGTN to us sounds like a local WGTN. news channel. Yeah. <laughs> Um, fucking sports on WGTN. Um, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> with your with your weather girl, Katie Katie Smith or some shit like that. Katie Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> guaranteed to be blonde and have a double D at least. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was that? Um, that fucking show that was it? Splat was that the show we were talking about the other day? Uh, maybe some of my uh, fellow Kiwis in the chat uh, might remember uh, a certain show that we used to have in New Zealand. Um, might be able to find you a nice clip from it. <laughs> uh, it. I don't know entirely. Amorous, I, I'm not sure if this dude is uh, a fucking sovereign citizen. But based on what I'm seeing he teaches, just off of like, yeah... Yeah, he's sovereign citizen. Yeah, I, I'm willing to make that call, Amaris. <laughs> Fucking David, David's event topics may include but are not limited to child protective services, traffic stops and tickets, affidavits, affidavits and, and admin processes, state national passports, understanding public administration, and law, land, air, water. That was the dead giveaway, was the law thing. It's the land, air, water. Um... 
So, yeah, definitely sovereign citizen. Um, I drink Palladial Silver. God damn it. Don't do the same. Uh, whenever I think of sovereign citizens, I think of the more sovereign citizen that broke into a lady's house and changed the locks and claimed the house as his own. <laughs> Genius. Uh, Oh, he's a member of Eamon Bundy's defense team. Uh, yeah, no, that's, yeah, straight up. Fuck. He, he's, his credentials for sovereign citizenry then are well, well established. <laughs> oh, he even, oh, he does. Oh, yes. He talks, okay, yeah. Um, he, he abbreviates the bar, uh, he, uh, it, not abbreviate, he turns, uh, bar into an acronym. Um, so it, yes, he's got the B A R thing going on, defending yourself against the B dot A dot R dot association and the overreach of government and government agencies and that sort of thing. Yeah. He's, his credentials for sovereign citizenry, citizenry are well in order. <laughs> Very impressive. Oh, God. How much bullshit do you have to learn to, to get to that point? You know what I mean? And just just to have, like, I, I, I really do admire the passion for learning, but, like, they just went the wrong direction. Um, uh, fucking, what's that? Is it Oki? Um, um, fucking, uh, uh Ever Research Gemstone? You mean that, is that Pantera shit? Is that the, the, the Pantera de Oro? Uh, thing, duck. Uh, not a ton, but I know what it is. Um, uh, Oki investigates. Uh, on YouTube, I think it's Oki investigates. Oki's weird stories. Oki's weird stories. Um, one of my favorite subgroups is um uh, uh the secret space program. This is okay. So the secret space program is great. It's fucking hilarious. Um. He fell down this rabbit hole of like secret space program conspiracy channels on YouTube. And he's a fairly well-established documentary filmmaker in his own right. And so he's like, you know, he, I, he, he said like, I, I held on to this idea, but I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with it. Um, and oh, it's way beyond Jewish space laser Zaka, the secret space program. I'll get into it in a second. I'll, I'll, I'll outline it. Jewish um, space laser. So, um, I was going to ask you about that since it's based in Vegas. Yeah, fucking Rev. He, um, he, okay, so he basically f fell in with one of the, he found one of like the, one of the larger YouTubers who is supposedly a, a survivor, a, a participant in the secret space program. And his, his, his goal when he finally figured out was to get on that guy's air and tell a testimonial. So he basically spent a year learning secret space program narrative structure the content the whole year of your life and then constructed a speech that he could sort of work he basically built himself a character and he built himself enough of material for monologuing and as uh, for response to questions that he could embody the character and he went full method on it. And his, his explanation um, afterwards is great. He said, I didn't feel inauthentic at all when I was embodying the character. I, I, it flowed. I, I didn't feel like I was putting on a front. I slipped into this character. It's who I was for him. He was, it was very natural for him. He wow. said, I didn't feel like I, I was grifting. I didn't feel like anything. So it's a sort of the a little insight into the psychology of how one becomes, right? But it takes Acting. it takes basically a year of your life to learn these sorts of things. Yeah, the link is in chat if you want to watch Oki's shit from uh, from himself. So the secret space program is basically this offshoot conspiracy that is amazing. Long and short of it is is that space Nazis that didn't agree with Hitler. Okay, so the Nazis have a uh, secret. I've seen that movie. Yeah. Right. The Nazis have access to secret technology that is derived from UFOs and that sort of stuff, right? The, the, the Bell and a whole bunch of those programs, right? And they go to Antarctica, 
right? Antarctica. And they find the hollow earth. They find a whole bunch of alien technology. They may or may not find some aliens, depending on who's spinning this tale for you. And they take, gift, sure. they take to the skies, but they disagree fundamentally with Hitler because they've had this like advancement in technology. They're beyond giving a shit about that sort of thing at this point. So they establish a, a, a base on the dark side of the moon. Uh, <laughs> fucking Vivo, who's German. You are not to talk about our true history. Um, <laughs> so they establish like a, a moon base and then they establish colonies on Mars. All of this is supposedly real, right? There's all of this buildup. So what happens is that there's an international response to this. And that is a part of the, no. that's generally what we refer to as the secret space program is that there's this globalist response to the space Nazis who aren't really Nazis, but they are referred to as the fourth Reich. And <laughs> So the, the, the secret space program has a whole host of facets, but the general uh, consensus is that like the globalist conspiracy, uh, the globalist secret space program is uh, very corporatocracy, very corporate run, has all sorts of like slave programs and mind control programs and genetic engineering and breeding programs. And they capture people from earth who have like favorable genetics and favorable dispositions and they clone them and they brainwash them and they use them for like secret soldiers and they can fucking time lock people so that you maybe you've lived for like 500,000 years because there's time travel capacity under the, uh, in this narrative as well so some people uh the the fourth reich once they figured out the time travel technology went back in time to establish um a lot of the like foundations for what would be a future society and they sort of time looped it and then the secret space program is constantly embattled with them and it's it's all these so you have like these super soldier programs that are born of the secret space program and that's where the testimonials come from come from is pe this is where people enter right people who have a variety of mental illnesses or just are cast out from society and are looking for a place to belong right and so for one reason or another they take it upon themselves to build a narrative for themselves and they undergo regress uh, hip, hypno, uh, uh, hypnotic regressive uh, regression and they experience through not at all suggested prompted questions these 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 moments from supposedly the secret space program life that they lived and how they they may have like spliced genetics with Arcturians and shit like that and that you know I was used to command a, 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 a I, I psychically commanded a uh, like a battalion of like super soldier clones of myself that were used as throwaways and I experienced every one of their deaths when they were used for suicide missions and that trauma and baggage weighs on me and that to X, Y, and Z. I have magic powers that they've since fucking like restricted from me and shit like that because when they returned me from the time lock secret space program, it is this insane fucking crazy world of science fiction, like high science fiction, just LARPing. But there's... I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing like what, uh, you know, the human mind can come up with really some really creative thought processes going on here. Um, yeah, Rev, my exculpatory narrative is the system fucked me over and it's not entirely my fault. That is generally, I mean, there just <laughs> seems to be baggage associated with most of the individuals. Um, it's really fascinating. It's really interesting. And it's, um, it, it, you find your way into all sorts of elements that actually do tie into some of the military industrial complex. So it's like that tr kernel of truth situation where, you know, a little bit of fucking truth there that like, yeah, you know what? Area 51 is the facility for um, the Lockheed Skunk Works, which is the highly experimental next, next, next generation sort of aircraft development uh, field that we we deal with. Right. Like so you, you have these like kernels of truth that are sprinkled throughout that just grow fields of bullshit from them. Mm -hmm. and like, it, uh, you know, like you've got Regan coming back. Uh, that kind of shit. Night Aka. Yeah. And yeah, Bob Lazar. Fucking Bob Lazar, a legitimate fucking billionaire um, 
fucking aircraft mogul on his own right um, who believes a lot of this shit. Uh, yeah, it's 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 fascinating to look into and really, really interesting because they come up with like, you know, like the, the, the kind of Star Trek level nerd obsession where they start like design, yeah. the, designing the ships and explaining how the fucking warp drive might theoretically work and shit like that. The secret space program people get up to that level of detail. That that high level of nerd shit. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they bring that to the table. And so it's not just like wow. a hand wave situation. They they do the lore dump for it. So there's a lot of a secret space program lore. There's a lot of lore. Ooh. Thinking of the SCP Foundation and all of that shit. Yeah, basically. Basically. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's in that territory. It's that sort of nerd-based obsession sort of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. They should just nut up and ride it. I think it's really interesting, like, you know, the collaborative effort going on there. Human psychology is. Yeah, and it's it's happening because, you know, like I said, the the majority of it, you you step back and you look and you go, oh, it's because that, right? Like, it's it's because that. Um, Yeah. Fucking, all right. It's the secret space program. Yeah. Yeah. I think with that, I'm going to call it a night. I want to get some food in me. Well, thank you for having me on. You're welcome, Fabulous. Welcome to the community. Like, uh, hang out. Hang out for a while sort of situation. Uh, You know, ask questions, say hi. And other areas of the Discord server magically start appearing. So Sweet. Okay, I will do. Thank you for having me on. And uh, get a good one. Nice speaking with you. And, you know. Try yes, you yes. since New Zealand's in the future, you know, send word back if the world ends up being destroyed or something. I I always say I will for ah. sure. Uh, all right, <laughs> all right. Thanks, thanks for hanging out. Nice talking yeah. to you. Oh, all right. Uh, let me do that. Hey, you're welcome, Rumble. Uh, I don't remember the name, but it did sound familiar. Secret Life plot straight out of the movies. Yeah, yeah. Dude, the Secret Space Program is crazy and i adore it um like i said a lot of fucking lore to go with that uh we're gonna raid over to hammer fucking he's playing i think he's playing a yakuza game i've always wanted to get into the yakuza games he's playing yakuza 4 i've always wanted to get into the yakuza games but i just there's so much fucking content there i'm just not gonna do it oh good luck with that alex god i hate video editing God, I hate video editing. Um, either way, yeah, I'll probably jump into VC a little bit while I cook. Um, oh, yeah, no, Rev. The SSP stuff um, ties into so much other stuff. So much other stuff. Uh, Rumble, totally worth it. Totally, totally valuable thing. Um. Well, Alex, good luck with that. Uh, let's see. Some sovereigns and links enter your own. Oh, fuck it. He just did a dump. Look at Amherst. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow is bad movie night. Um, I don't know what we're watching. I never do prior to bad movie night. But tomorrow is bad new movie night for those of you that enjoy it. Uh, it's always a hell of a time. And everybody, newcomers alike, uh, feckless, if you want to join us. Tomorrow's bad movie night. We watch shitty movies and get drunk and stoned, basically. Bye.